so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, record our session today, and then okay. I'm gonna post it on YouTube for you so you can rewatch it. Um, and if you have any like issues with that and you want to just make it private, let me know. I can do that too. Yeah, I got you. No worries. I'm, I'm cool with like you sharing it. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, and so um, I kind of wanted to go over like Morgana support because I've been kind of looking at your OPGG and it's it's a little scary, but it's uh, it's fine. Nothing we can't like help you with. Um, but uh, yeah, let's maybe just start with this game first uh, since you just played it. Yeah. Um, so I was able to uh, spectate through OP OPGG. Um, Which, uh, is this the Morgana game that I lost or the Morgana game that I won? No, this is the game you literally just played. Oh, with Vi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so I don't know if you wanted to go through this or not. Yeah, let's, let's go through it. Uh, but, all right, so I'm going to go through just like, I, I kind of made some notes real quick as I was watching. Um, yeah. So let's just play it through. So the first, like, you know, it's fine. You, you kind of do your, your standard clear, your gromp, blue, wolves, uh, and then you move over to wraiths, blue, and, and you kind of do a full... Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, did, you did a full jungle clear and then you died, which is, I, I mean, like, the funny thing is, like, I, do you lose your buffs if you die? You don't lose uh, red or blue. Okay, so that's, like, actually maybe kind of genius, because, like... <laughs> If you die, like, ki like right as you kill one or both of them, like, you save seven or eight seconds on the back, and you just, like, uh, I mean, it depends on the death timer, right? But, like, I don't know. I, I was kind of thinking about, is there, like, a smart way to do it where, like, I don't know, you can die intentionally. But then I think, okay, if the death, death timer is over eight seconds, then it's not a good idea. But, yeah, so, point is, okay, when you respawn, uh, you, you, your red buff is ticking, so you don't really have time to just do a full jungle clear. I would say just make yeah. use of the red buff that you still have while you have it and then just go straight to top instead of taking those first, right? Because you can go gank and then go back to those Krugs because they're still going to be there, right? Yeah. So this was a good gank by you. Uh, your cannon was just completely useless. Like, look at He's just like, okay, so he's just running and he's literally doing nothing. And then he, fl like, flashes there. I don't understand. Yeah, flashes late. That was like, okay, let's just go back. I mean, this is obviously nothing for you to worry about. Like, you did everything right here. You put out all the damage you could. But look at Kennen. He's not attacking. He could be attacking every single step he takes, right? It's called attack move. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's unfortunate, but that was a really good gank by you. So, um, yeah, take the opportunity to counter jungle if you can. Uh, take Scuttle. Uh, this is a, you know, this Yasuo was, was kind of carrying the game, which was nice. Um, but, like yeah, no, he definitely carried hard, uh, and like they were kind of giving him kills too, which was nice. Like that last one there was a really good outplay, actually. But um, so this is good. I mean, you're uh, you're getting through your jungle. Um, let's see, I'm gonna speed it up until seven minutes. Uh, this is good standard clear. Uh, what are you usually thinking about while you're jungling? Like when you're doing these camps, are you watching the map too? Yeah, I'm watching the map and I'm watching where bot lane's position is. If they're pushed under tower is when I generally like to gank because I have I can push whoever I'm ganking into the tower and have tower deal damage as well instead of having them being pushed into the middle or towards the enemy towers. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, you won't have that opportunity um, to be under tower often. So, like, middle lane, like, this is actually a fine gank too because, like, <clears throat> this is actually the worst place to have this frozen to be honest so like if you see this situation occur um where they're in this zone here like yeah. right here this is like the red zone because like you know obviously you can't gank them if they're behind it because they're under tower but this is really dangerous because it can like kind of bait in a really bad gank right because all they have to do is take a few steps back and they're within yeah. tower range and if you dive on them especially as vi you're going to take a bunch of shots so I wouldn't yeah. even waste my time here. Like either what you want to do is is type into chat. Like what they're doing is they've they've frozen the wave here. So I would say either break the freeze and have them shove as hard as they can into turret so that the minion wave can kind of reset back to the middle, or just tell them to play safe back and let them shove towards their tower and just come back in like a minute, right? One minute to okay. thirty, like thirty seconds to a minute, and that should allow enough time for them to kind of let the shove go. But a lot of times, yeah. as the jungler, like especially at these lower elos, you want to like kind of suggest. I don't want to like 
I don't want to say tell people because then you get flamers and all that nonsense, but just yeah. like maybe suggest like, hey, like I'll come bot, but just try and get you know the wave in a in a comfortable position, and it's no big deal, you know, like you know you, you don't have to just because you came down do something, you know, because a lot of times you know like I think I think you actually go in to try and gank here, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So like again, like it's good that you're patiently waiting and maybe for something to happen, but this is like a bad time. Like why would you go in here? You know? Yeah. Like they see yeah, they, they see you coming and they just walk and away. I, that's yeah. why I, that's when I backed up and just kept going. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's like it's no big deal to sit there and wait and like and kind of survey the situation. Maybe come into this tri bush and wait too and hopefully they can they can push it up. Because, uh, like let's go back real quick and just see what the minions were doing. So yeah, you could see uh, wait, they already went back. Okay. Alright, so you could see here, they've got like the dominant position and they're attacking your your minions yeah. so literally you just wait 10 to 15 seconds and all, like this minion will die they'll go for the cannon first and then they might be like the fro the wave will be frozen here next and then it's like 10 to 15 seconds they don't even know you're here because it's pinked and you get a free double kill right but like i don't know maybe you just got anxious no big deal but you just kind of went out now and she stops attacking these minions and now the wave is you know, and then you attack this, so it's kind of back to being frozen here, you know? So, yeah. anyway, uh, don't want to beat a dead horse, but yeah, like, so just kind of understanding kind of where, how many minions are on your side, how many minions on their side, and which way is it going to be pushing. Try and look into the future a little bit, so like, how many, and this is good for, for when you're playing in lane too, right? So like, yeah. if you see your jungler uh, on, on the bot side doing bot camps, or even top side doing kind of some top camps, uh, try and set your wave up or try and have your ADC set your wave up so that okay He's up top. He might come down in the next two or three minutes So we have time to kind of just be like aggressive and, and, and do what we want By the time he gets to our side of the jungle start to try and set the wave to be pushing back towards your tower Or, or like, you know freeze it right in front of your tower and start, start thinking about things like that to help your, your jungler get good ganks off too I mean that's helpful, right? Uh, all right, so let's move on to the next part. I think that was 11 minutes, so you're good. You're just jungle, or you're just kind of clearing jungles. Um, let's see. So you started with trackers, knife, right? Like I would suggest. I mean, I don't know vi Like I'm, I'm not like super familiar with the vi like optimal vi builds, but I would assume getting boots here at least level one would be helpful, just to get you around the map faster. I mean, I know you've got yeah, your, your abilities. I, I totally messed that up. I was trying to do. I was trying to do a tracker's knife because I was going for like a more of a bruiser vi build instead of because we didn't have any tanks. Right. So I needed a I needed a bruiser vi build over. Like a damage buy. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm just, you know, for for, uh, you know, at this point you had twenty three thousand gold under your belt. You gotta at least put three hundred of that into a boots, you know, just so you can get yeah. around faster and you can chase people down. I mean, you've got, I, I know you've got your gap close abilities, but it's nice to just have those boots. You know, no one will ever get away from you. But, um, all right, so, all right, so at eleven minutes, um. This was actually a really good engage here. You, you you patiently waited for them to come up, and then you came in and got this double kill. That was good. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you missed your first ability. If you had hit that, you could have ulted Calista um, uh, instead, and then you wouldn't have taken any of these tower shots. So my question here, okay, so once you once you get the double kill onto Callista, uh, yeah. Um, all right, so all right, you you're trying to avoid tower shots, right? So you go up back towards your tower. Was that on purpose? Because you know Rengar's here, right? Yeah, I just in, in the heat of the moment, I think I forgot Rengar was there, and I'm more trying to get out of tower. Right. Okay. Yeah, and you got pings going too, which is hilarious. So uh, like it's so the problem is like you did you set this up perfect, right? So you cut off. The two weak ones, and you one v two them, leaving these two to one two v one the Rengar. But I don't know what the hell they were doing that. Or, like <laughs> like they should be able to kill Rengar two v one very easily. But the fact that they let him have like seventy percent health like health against you is kind of ridiculous to me. So anyway, he comes up to try and, and kill you, and this is actually pretty well played by you. You kind of even though you make a mistake going this way, like obviously going up this way would have been ideal, but. Yeah. 
you walk this way, it's actually fine because you have enough health and you know your champion. And a Morgana bind hits, which is nice. And so now you see the Zigzult coming in, right? So in my opinion, going back in is really dicey with your health. Uh, I yeah. would I would literally just punch out this way and just get the hell out and just if you get the kill you get the kill if not you you not but it's nice you get that you get the shield but then obviously you kind of take one step back up and, and kill yourself because if you took one step this way you survive and and you get the, the the triple kill for free but unfortunately I think probably heat of the moment or whatever you just kind of step towards the ultimate instead of away from it so yeah obviously next time do not walk into the ultimate um, <laughs> let's see. Um, Okay, next one is 13 minutes. So, all right, so you move, um, you do bot jungle clear, and then you go solo dragon. Okay. I have no help with dragons at all that game. <laughs> yeah, you, it's going to be tough to, uh, unless you kind of coordinate it right. Like, after you get that triple kill, uh, there's an argument to be made to just go for it there. But, okay, so you, you do the dragon, you solo it just fine, right? But yep. the real big problem here is that you engage. Right, like you're. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> this was like a free, like just get me out. Like, yeah, she's by herself, but you know, think like obviously 10, 30 seconds into the future, like this Morgana is not probably going to be able to walk. You know, look, look at the look at the gap between Morgana and Callista. She's going to have you know this much yeah. time walking time to just be able to two v one you, and you've got your Jin back here. You know, your Yasuo is here, so like you have literally no help at all. So having to do, you know, just. This was just like a suicide mission, really. Um, so next time, you know, <laughs> yeah. just try to survey like where your team is at. You know, like okay, do I have follow up engage? And I actually know that there's a couple of different spots in the game. I'm gonna point out to you where you actually make that that decision to kind of just Leroy Jenkins and get your, you know, just go in hard. <laughs> um, so that'll save you a lot of deaths in 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 each one of your games. You know. Um, it's just kind of like the, the, the ones that can be easily avoidable, you know? That's like the that's the stuff I kinda wanna talk about today, because I know you're 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 bronze five, right? How, how long have you been playing, by the way, League? Uh well I started playing like at the beginning of season five mm -hmm. and then my computer shit out on me, so I had to go I had to like crash that computer and I just recently started playing again. Okay. And I've been trying to get back into the swing of things. Okay. But I used to play I used to play five jungle. So. Okay, you played a lot in season five. Yeah. Okay. I just never played any ranked matches because I ah. didn't think I was good enough. Okay, so okay, so you're now you're you're bronze five, right? You're at the bottom. Yep. So like to be honest, like you shouldn't even give a shit, right? Because you can't go any lower, right? So it's okay. So this is uh, before we go on. I'm gonna. All right. So this is unfortunate. So you see the really low health guy, and you get like yep. really, really excited, and you want to get a kill. This is like, again, a death that could be very avoidable. Um, don't just bloodlust because, yeah, sometimes it's better to get away, let them get away with some health and not give Callista a triple kill than it would be. So here's here's the thing. Here's, here's the problem. Um, you know, obviously she – it's kind of unlucky because, like, she kind of blocks your, your, um, your jump mm -hmm. and you can't get that kill off. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to. Um, but – like, going for that is super dicey because it's, like, even if you get the kill, you're probably going to die, too, right? Because after you, yeah. you you get the kill, what happens, right? Like, obviously, it's going to – you're going to get some tower aggro, probably. Um, yeah. You're going to – actually, your minions are here, so you might not have gotten tower aggro. But you would have definitely died to the Callista. So it's just, like, a, you know, best-case scenario – you get the kill and you die. Worst case scenario, you don't get the kill and you die, right? So there's really not a lot of upside there. But I just want to show you something. This is actually good for Morgana. Um, this is because I know you're you're trying to learn Morgana really well, right? Yeah. Okay. Morgana is probably one of my favorite support champs in the entire game. Uh, yeah, I she love is Morgana. my favorite support champ. I love how, 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 how you can well, play her. You can play her mid and top as well. By the way. All right. So here's a situation where, as a Morgana. It's amazing because you know this um, Nami only has like really one direction that she's going to run it, right? She's not going to run up this way. She's not going to run really down this way. She's going to run kind of in this. I mean, I can't really draw on this screen, but like, can you see my mouse yeah, moving? No, like, 
you've got this cone, okay, that she can move into. And as a Morgana, it's so much easier to hit a bind when you know kind of the general direction. And it's going to be in this line, generally speaking. So you throw your bind right here. And she either has to get hit by it or she has to stop moving and stutter step back this way, which gives you enough time to get close and get the kill, right? So my point is she goes for, I'm going to go half speed here. She goes for the Callista, just oddly yeah. enough. Like, I don't understand. Maybe she thought you guys had this kill, but, you know, in this situation, always go for the sure kill, right? Even yeah. if it's going to KS, even if it's going to um, be overkill, it doesn't matter because then you've got a three on one and you've got a Yasuo coming. So you can tower dive because you've got a, a wave coming. So again, yeah. just as a Morgana player, make sure you understand that. Get the get the kill under your belt. So uh, secondly, it's unfortunate Jin misses his last ultimate. He hits every other one. Uh, so you make this mistake. It's unfortunate. Um... But as the Morgana player, what is she doing standing on top of everything, right? Like, she should not be anywhere yeah. near here. Like, your positioning as Morgana should always be on the outskirts, right? Because you're not a melee champ. There's no reason for you to be close to anything. Like, she then exhausts this <laughs> Nami. I, I don't understand that at all. Obviously, you want to exhaust the Callista because she's the one who does all the damage. So... Uh, this was kind of a useless exhaust, unless she was going to try and hit a bind and then a pool. Uh, yeah. But, like, look, so here's the thing. Uh, Nami's got healing abilities, right? So you walk up that close, she's not going to just stand there. She's got her tower. So she's gonna, she got the heal off of Morgana because she was so close. So now yep. she's not even sliver of health. She's got, like, over 100 health. What's her, what's her health exactly? 190. So it's even harder to kill her now. And let's look at Morgana... Uh, she's got black shield, right? So you see that your AD carry just flashed in to get this kill, yeah, and she's still shield. just holding on to black shield. So she just let Jin get murdered, right? Like you black shield Jin, he doesn't get knocked up, he gets the kill. Maybe he dies still, but he still gets the kill off before he dies. And now <clears throat> Callista gets the triple because she she effectively did nothing correct in that entire exchange. Yeah. So yeah, it was re it was really unfortunate, but. That's a situation where Morgana alone gave Callista a triple kill, okay? Yeah. She could have done literally anything differently, and she would have helped the team out in it. You know what I mean? So Morgana is literally one of those those champs that can be a total game changer in one way or the other, good and bad. So that's a, that's an example that's unfortunate. And then you just see the Yasuo come in and just clean up. That's awesome. So good for him. Um, kind of bailed you guys out there because if Callista, you know, She's three and one at that point with three assists. She getting a big Callista is not what you want. So it's good that yeah, Yasuo yeah. came in and cleaned up. So anyhow, uh, let's move on to um, <clears throat> 1840. You kind of died there too. Uh, so Zegs was Zegs was so mad about that entire game. Well, oh, was he typing in chat? Yeah. Oh yeah. So as soon as you get one negative uh, a chat from an uh, enemy player, just mute him. Uh, don't even think twice. Just mute. Um, it's no big deal. So go ahead. Okay, so you alt here. Um, not a big deal. Um, yeah, going in, unfortunately, after that, obviously. I mean, you can probably tell why that's a bad idea. Um, yeah. Because, like, if you queue into him and he does flash over here, and he could have outplayed you pretty hard there. So, like, say he flashed right... Yeah, so, like, he actually did. So he, when he flashes, he kind of pulls you so far out that you have to flash out to not die, right? Yeah. So the engage was fine. You do your damage, and even if you don't get the kill, um, and you know it's it's not a big deal because look, he's got to go back. Uh, well, he should have gone back, but he's not afraid of this cannon, and he shouldn't be. But typically speaking, yeah. you should you should forcing them to go back is actually just fine because it's essentially a kill without the death timer, right? Because yeah. you know you don't get the gold and you don't get the death timer, but you get your laner to to come back some and free farm. For the time he's gone, yeah. so that's a, that's a great that's a fine gank. You know, there's no reason to, to overcommit. You know, make sure you take your uh, your your wind while you can and, and not give some of it back. But uh, at this point in the game, start to realize that um, you know your cannon is completely useless. I mean, he's got a a, a rod, and that's about it. And he's got <laughs> nine, 93 CS and oh oh yeah okay. Um, and the Nasus has 127. I don't know how many stacks he has. He's in the fucking... What is that? Uh, 
So yeah, he's, he's ridiculous. I don't he's know how many stacks so, he has, yeah. but he's getting big. He's getting really yeah. big. So uh, I would say at this point for you as a jungler, you're just going to ignore top for the rest of your life. You're never going top again. Okay. Yeah, and if you notice after after I died after I face checked this bush, yeah. I don't think I went top after this. Yeah. Well, I think you did actually. You did. You did go did back. I? Yeah, you did. So okay. So, um, look. Uh, so Ziggs actually, you should have seen Ziggs coming this way, right? Like yep, you. I saw Ziggs. Okay, so you saw Ziggs, and yep. you start walking up, and you see him from this ward pretty clearly. Yep. But how did you miss Rengar too? Were you just kind of I, like bloodlusted? I'm not sure because I saw <laughs> I saw Ziggs and I didn't see Rengar. Yeah, he didn't ult either. So like he was literally like two seconds was, after yep. he came into view of, of yep. this ward. So this again, this was another kind of avoidable kill just by making sure you, you stay, you know. Like for you as a jungler too, you should always know where the enemy jungler is or at least have try and have a good idea of him. And if you don't see him on the map, assume he's close by just as a default, just so you kind of always play like as a general uh, rule just a little safer than you normally would. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And that should help you um, avoid a lot of deaths and, and, and ward a lot as much as you can. Like buy pinks as much as you can and kind of pink like the normal spots. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this bush, that brush, the, you know, the Yasuo's got that ward. That one, that's a good pink. Uh, this is a great pink. So as long as you can have at least one pink on the map at all times, you know, that that's really helpful for everyone and you and, and, and being able to jungle. Um, and, uh, all right, so let's move on to, uh, the 15, oh wait, where are we at, 19 minutes? Uh, yeah, 21 minutes. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, so you go back up top now, um, you know, after you got killed. Oh, uh, yeah, I do, because I see that Nasus is pushed. Yeah, so you see the Nasus push, but again, like, you know, it shouldn't be just the general Nasus is pushed, let's go gank, because you can't kill Nasus. Like, it's, he's so lot. fed. Yeah. He's got a chain vest. He's got a spirit visage. Like, he's, like, literally um, huge. He's got 150 CS. As a Nasus, that should just absolutely never happen, right? So, um, yeah. you got to do your best to, first of all, focus down the Nasus early game. So, I guess you, you gank later. But, um, wait, where are we at? Yeah, 21 minutes. Okay, so... Uh, you get this kill on Rengar, and then you go top, because um, you were hanging out there. Uh, like, the the way to beat a Nasus usually is you have to kill him uh, pre level six, right? Uh, you have to camp top yeah. against the Nasus lane, or else this is what's gonna happen, right? Like, this cannon has got to run away, and then he can literally just kill the both of you and just like not bat an eye. Um, yeah. And so. Yeah. Like once sure. once he gets past that threshold of I've got two defensive items, which he bought a thorn mail on his way out, <laughs> right? He he teleported back and he's trying to like he's trying to taunt and then Yasuo is not having any part of that. Um, so uh, once he gets these two items, basically with these stacks, like he's got so much sustain with his Q, like he gets like you know twenty percent of his health back with each Q, right? Uh, so yeah. for a minion, so. It's just really tough. Even this fed Yasuo was fourteen and two, almost died to him, and he's only three and three. So don't let like, you know, Nasus players are, are tough because these these stats will deceive you. You got to look at the items and his CS, and and since he's the number one CS player, you guys are like, you guys got to try and end this game quickly because the longer this game goes, if he's like a decent Nasus player, the more kind of screwed you guys are. Um, okay. So he's a real scale champ. Like he's like the ultimate. 60 minute game he can literally walk up and one shot towers you know what I mean like he's a very scary yeah. late game champ so the way to beat that always if you're jungling I mean I don't know if you're going to be playing jungle much but uh, against any like if, if any Nasus comp you want to have your jungler oh by the way yeah this was an absolute yeah that was awful that was an awful this game. was just yeah I don't understand what was happening I was like this was like my Leroy Jenkins moment I was like okay <laughs> she's like literally no one's around you got your Yasuo and Jin at bot and then you've got a Morgana who's proven to be useless <laughs> right next to you. <laughs> and you're against four of their players. I was like, oh, man, he just really wanted something to happen. I don't know if you're, like, tilting or what happened, but I don't know. It was um, it was an unavoidable death was my point. Um, okay, so uh, you lose a tower because of that, by the way, um, which, is, which is, again, it's a big problem. It's, like, a big issue because, you. Just, I mean, yeah, you made a mistake and you died. But that led to them opening, like, literally, they just got a free tower out of that. So that's kind of, 
you know, obviously dying is not a fun um, fun thing to do, but it's also like kind of game changing. Like later in the game, even one death can really screw things up. So try and watch that as the game goes like longer and longer. Um, so this is fine. Uh, he tries to come out at you in this. The uh, binding hits finally. That's really good. You get the kill off. Um, I don't really understand this, uh, where your bot lane is just like 10, 10 miles away doing nothing. Uh, I actually I, chatted. I chatted right there. I said I said I went in for ult. Why didn't you engage? Yeah, I mean honestly. Because that was an easy. That was an easy three kills for us. Yeah, I, I mean, you guys, you were 3v2 at all full health. I mean, except for you were at full health, but you still had ult, so it was essentially just, like, free damage, right? Like, you're yeah. at half health, they're both at full health, and even even though these guys are at full health as well, like, yeah, you ult in, and Morgana black shields um, either you or Jin, and you guys just go to town and just go ham. I mean, I know the Ziggs is here, but the Yasuo's got him cut off. Okay, so you ult in, all right, so this is perfect. You got Callista down to half health. And yep. all they have to do is engage and they win that. But so in my opinion, the way that you could have done that differently is since these players are in bronze and some of them are just like they have no idea what they're doing, make sure you just start pinging. Start target pinging Callista before you ult so they know what you're doing, right? Okay. Um, just to give them at least like a fraction of a second or a second's heads up because some people you can like kind of bait out bloodlust in your teammates you know who aren't super great at the game like when you get to like kind of gold or higher people will just understand that that's like that situation probably won't occur because you won't get their bot lane just like walking up to you for that because that was kind of a dumb decision but if you are lucky enough they'll just kind of understand okay she's ulting in I'm going to engage and follow up because it's a free kill but you got to kind of help to climb at the lower, lower, lower elos. You've got to help your team kind of understand things that you might understand, but they might not. Um, and that might be like, I'm about to alt here. It's like pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's what you're supposed to do, but maybe they don't know that. So they're just playing it safe. So before yeah. you go in, just hit that ping button once or twice on the guy. You don't have to like type it out because that's just like, it's, you know, you don't have enough time to do that. But um, yeah. so. Anyway, that'll help them. Give them, a, give them a slight heads up. Allow them to, uh, to help you. Um, all right, so you guys uh, win some fights in mid. Um, you guys go kind of clean up their team. Um, so at this point in the game, it's kind of like becoming like the ARAM mode where like everyone's just trying to kill each other instead of like taking, taking objectives. So. You guys have two mid towers down, and you still had the you know there was a point in the game where you still had both outer towers on the on the outer t uh, lanes. Um, yeah. As soon as you start getting like opening up the map, when like you've got the tier two mid down, start focusing. Okay, let's all group five top. You know, take this tower. Let's group five bot. Take this tower and shove it in. So that's good. You guys got the two towers down, bot too. But um, this the outer tier was still you know. So this is, it was good. You guys grouped there, and. Uh, and took that outer tower, and then now it, the focus is to just get to an inhibitor. So, uh, again, this was fine. I mean, you guys kind of, you, you had this fight. You, you saved the Morgana. You died too. That's fine, though. You saved the Morgana. That's, it's just kind of unlucky. But, yeah, so, um, again, hang on, let's go back to normal speed. All right, so once you respawn, like, what, do you, what are you thinking in your brain that you want to do next? Uh, on this one? Right, like right I now. I think. Just looking at the mini map. I think right now I said that we should go, that we should get Baron. I think that's what I was saying. Okay. At this point. Okay. Uh, why Baron? Because Baron that could have given Kenneth the ability to split top mm -hmm. as we, uh, the rest of us four group mid. Okay. Um. Okay. Which could be an option, maybe. I, I don't know, like, like, a, like, you can't just go take Baron, right? Like, obviously, like, yeah. they're gonna probably contest. It's like, you can get Baron, like, okay, at the lower elos, there's no reason to ever, like, set up Barons, right? What you wanna do is focus on your, um, all right, focus on your objectives, right? Like, get everyone to group five mid, and let's take this tower and take this inhibitor, right? Because once that happens, then they have to deal with the, um, inhibitor minions that are going to come up mid 
right? Which means they have to leave someone at base, which then allows you to get a free Baron, right? If you were to do Baron first, then they can 5v5 contest, right? And then it's kind of a, more of a roll of the dice, right? Like whose team yeah. fight is better? Uh, in my opinion, your team fight is way better, right? They've got um, uh, initiate with Callista Nami, but they don't have any CC. Like Ziggs has like very little CC. Uh, Rengar's got very little CC. Nasus has almost no CC, right? Like he's kind of slow, but it's single target. Most of it's all single target. Um, yeah. You've got a single target lockdown. Kennen's got a AOE stun. Um, Yasuo's got his AOE stun uh, with his ultimate. Uh, Morgana's got an AOE stun. You've got a h amazing team comp, okay? Like compared to theirs in a team fight scenario, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't have a tank or a front line, but it's not really necessary with all the CC. Like you can just have like, you know, Morgana flash in, uh, flash in alt Zonias. You can. She doesn't have a Zonia. She went frozen heart, but flash in alt. Have their team scatter or or have Kennen go in first. And just alt everybody and stun them, and then have uh, Morgana flash in, and then have everyone stunned for like a full five seconds while Yasuo is alting them. That's like just the three of them, and then you've got an alt that comes in and, and fucks their black back lineup, and then Jin's like ten miles away shooting his little rocket off. Like it's it's a very disgusting team comp. I like it actually. So the point is, group is five from now onwards, and never leave each other's sides, and you just win the game, right? Um, and you'll kind of see like Yasuo. And Kennen and Morgana alone can probably 3v5 their team at this point. So just shove it out, take the inhibitor, and then get the free Baron instead of kind of going dicey and going 5v5, even though you've got a better 5v5 comp. So to be honest, like, you could have 5v5 uh, for the Baron first before going for inhibitor, but that's if you trust your team to be able to kind of, you know, properly fight in a team fight, um, which in my yeah. opinion at the lower elos, it's not. It's probably better to not um, take, take the risk and just go for, like, the plays... Like, how you're going to win these games is by just not you doing risky shit ever. It's, like, not, like, you know, very, you know, sexy or fun to, like, think about the game that way at, at the very yeah. beginning. But, like, when you're trying to learn the fundamentals of this game, you don't want to get, like, fancy. Like, there's no reason to do, like, the crazy flash engaged plays that, you know, will work sometimes and look awesome when they do, but, like, most of the time not work. You know what I mean? And you'll, like, yeah. lose the game off of it. Like, for now, just get really good at, like, you know, making good decisions, you know, and that would be to just group five, take the inhib, and then take the free Baron instead of rolling the dice with the team fight. So that and it, my point is, um, you know, just group together and, and start start looking for objectives. Okay, so mm -hmm. it kind of gets back into the ARAM mode where you guys are just kind of fighting here, fighting there, um, kind of wasting time a little bit. Uh, so you guys got to all recall now because you're all low after that fight. Uh, Kennen's got top pushing out, which is fine. Like. What you want to do is set up a slow push in, in the okay. outer. Like so, say you want to go for for um, the mid and hib or the bottom hib. You want to make sure the yeah. lanes that you're not in are going to be slow pushing, okay? Or even you, you know you don't need to have someone up top. So like you look at you just have to take one look up here. So you've got all these casters against three casters and an almost dead cannon. You know that this is pushing, right? So. In probably two minutes, that this massive wave is going to build up and hit this tower and crash in. So your team can group five mid, and like unfortunately your bot's shoving to you. So just have uh, before you engage in the middle, have one guy go bot, have them start slow pushing bot towers or, or, or bot waves. So you've got this one slowly pushing and then this one slowly pushing, and then you can all group five mid. And even if you don't fight and you just kind of dance around and slowly just kind of like fuck around, like. Slowly but surely, these are going to hit the tower and start, you know, they're going to have to send someone away to deal with it, right, from top or bot, because they can't just let their towers die. And yeah. in that time, you've created yourself a 4v5, then you engage a team fight. As soon as you see someone leave, you go right into a team fight and, and you win the game off of that, right? So those are like your just general basic strategies that you everyone uses at the higher levels, um, but... It's tricky when a lot of people don't like understand it or know that those kind of things exist, right? So it's good to just if you know that something's right and you know don't don't like be afraid to ping it or or, or tell people even if they don't listen. It's it's just good to have it in their brains, right? Like, look, see yeah. see this crash. Look how many minions are at their tower now, and then another wave yeah. coming in. Like this is perfect. You know what I mean? Like the tower can't even kill this many minions, so it's literally going to take this tower out. You know what I mean? 
So yeah. they have to send someone top, and they haven't even done that because they, they haven't even noticed it, which is which is very bronze. So um, it's it's kind of a perfect setup. But you get the inhibitor. That's great. Um, now, what is your plan, right? What are you trying to do now? Inhibitors down. Well, at first, I was... Engage Onassis. That's what you're yep. doing. <laughs> <laughs> when everyone's low, yeah, that's not a good idea. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, but once you guys all run away and get away, uh, what what next? What do you what do you want to do? Uh, well, we wanted to group mid. Just, I wanted to group mid and just push in because I kept trying to... I kept pinging mid. Okay, yeah. why, why mid? Because we already had him hip down. Okay, so um, you're not like super far ahead. Like if you guys were, I mean, it's pretty far ahead. 47, 40, 27 to 42, it's pretty far ahead at this point. Uh, your your Yasuo's got 28 kills. It's kind of disgusting. But uh, pretend this was like 35 instead of 42 and your, your kills were more spread out. Um, General rule of thumb is once you have one inhibitor down, never go back to that lane again. Okay, you've got your okay. you've got your inhibit you've got your uh, your inhib minion coming in, and they've got to deal with that, which leaves these lanes f completely free, right? Like they literally can't just ignore the mid lane now. They have to have someone, which means if you group as five, it will always be a five v four. Even if it's a five v five, then you can stall. If even if you're if you're behind, even if they have the thirty kills and you've got twenty five kills, and they, they can potentially kill you five v five. If they bring five up, don't fight. Just wait until the you know your your minions come in and start killing their towers. Because eventually, either you win the game because of your minions, or the the fight has to break out. Right. So stalling is the best case scenario. Right. Just letting the minions end the game. Uh, so anyway, my point is that, and, and especially at this elo, people are going to be just like sitting here trying to kill these things and get, you know, um, uh, their XP up and their gold up and all that stuff and farm away. So all of you should make a decision. Like you can take a look here. Like you guys are kind of fanned out and Kennen's top for some reason by himself, like trying to get this tower down. There's no point to that. Just get together as five. There's no point to split push because you've got an inhib. Just just literally ram your fist down their throats and just just kill this tower kill this inhib once you get two the game's really over i mean you guys were already kind of killing the shit out of them they were four in the death timer so the game's over but um you know this ken is you look at him like he got one tower and he's like halfway through but he doesn't realize the game's over you know what i mean like yeah like it's just like some people don't look at their maps some people don't like you know watch anything that that happens so um yeah, once you get the first inhib down, just work on the next ones. And as soon as you get three inhibs down, the game's over. Um, it's 7v5 at that point. So um, Anyway, that was not a bad game. Uh, you got kind of Yasuo carried, but and you definitely died a few times more than you should have. But you yeah. can kind of see, um, generally, um, you know the mistakes that you made. I, I, do you watch your games ever, over again? No, I don't. Okay, so that was your first time doing that? Yeah. Okay, so that's you can see like some of the obvious things that you did wrong, right? Like it's yeah. like it, my opinion when you first start, start playing this game, go ahead and do that. I mean, like I don't know if you have a recording software, or just go into OPGG, but like it's helpful, you know. When you, on a game like this, Morgana game where you died nine times, like I'm sure there were, you know, situations where you died when you shouldn't have, you know. So just go back in and be like, okay, let's watch that again and see where I died and why. And like, let's try and find a common link between this game and then this game where I died nine times, and then this game where I died fifteen times. And so, you'll probably start to see, you know, okay, holy shit, like I am way out of position every time in bot lane, and I get murdered, and I don't need to be, or I'm face checking a brush, and there's no wards there, and I'm trying to ward it, but like, you know, it's all kind of blank space, and it's really dangerous, and. But I go yeah. in there anyway. That's that's a common one that I see. Like if I um, if I open up Summoner's Rift here, uh, like a common one I see is like people trying to ward this brush here, right? If you're on uh, red side, yeah. uh, let's go ahead and make this color red. So you're on uh, red side, and you want to make sure you get this tri um, warded. But, like, this is all dark space to you. Like, you can't see anything in here. 
And then, yeah. like, the jungler is standing here, and you place a ward, she CCs you, a bot lane comes up and fucks you in the ass. Like, I, it's just, like, you know, yeah. unavoidable deaths. Like, you don't really need vision of this when you're just getting to lane, right? Like, it's nice if to know if the jungler is kind of coming in for you at some point, but wait until you shove the wave to about here, right? Yeah. And, and if you're pooping on them, then it's safe because then you can kind of do like the whole, all right, I'm going to walk over here, shoot a ward in, I'm safe because my AD carry is going to be here too. And uh, they're pushed in, so they're not going to be able to, uh, to counter engage, right? So like you can get the ward off and it's fine. But, you know, if... If we're if 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 the if the minion waves here, it's a little bit more difficult because then you've got more no man's land where people can yeah. be coming in from this way and, and and you're not gonna you're not gonna see it coming, um, uh, even from this way and you're not gonna see it coming. So, it's it's a little bit more dicey and it's like even it's and it's obviously completely unnecessary if you're here to avoid this brush. So anyway, um, my point is just. Deaths that are avoidable are very uh, obvious, and if you rewatch your games, you'll be able to see them. Um, just looking at this, I'm kind of scared because you've played 16 games and you've not won a single one. Um, yep, those are all those are all ranked games. Uh, well, okay, right. so I mean, I guess it's uh, and Soraka. Like these, are, I think, are the two best supports. Uh, well, I, they're the, my two favorite to play. I kind of main both of these, um, but. Uh, at the lowest elos, it's the hardest to climb out of when you play support, right? Because you have to yeah. rely on an AD carry. So if you want to climb out of bronze like quickly, uh, I would suggest playing either jungle, mid lane, or top lane. But again, like it's not about that. You just want to get better right now. Um, and sometimes you can like Morgana is great because you can carry a game, right? Soraka is great because you can carry a game, right? Like yeah. if if. Your job is Soraka. By the way, seven, two games played. I know it's a small sample size, but as Soraka, you should be dying like, as any champion. By the way, uh, the highest um, average kill or death count is going to be six. That should be your absolute cap. Okay. Okay. If you have um, anything around six, it's kind of on the cusp. But like between four and six is like the wheelhouse. And under four is like really, really good. So let's do this. I'm gonna go into the statistics, or no, I'm gonna go into the rankings. Uh, fuck, I kinda wanna do that. I'm gonna keep yours. Let's go back to your profile. And we'll make this a new tab. All right, so let's go look at the best Morgana players in the world, uh, at least in NA. Um, so let's go to the Champion Masters ranking and look for Morgana. is all right so the top 50 diamond or higher morgana players right here okay let's look at vuo who's a 61 uh he's a challenger ranked uh, uh support main and he plays morgana look at his look at his average deaths over 61 games 3.3 see that like that is ideal most games he doesn't die you know what i mean like yeah. He gets a lot of assists, a few kills, but more importantly, his KDA is insanely high because he just doesn't die, right? Yeah. And that's your goal. That's what you want to do. Uh, you want to make sure your numbers are this amazing. So one of the guys that I watch, one of the streams that I love to watch is Hanjaro. Um, he's a support main challenger. Uh, I think he's master tier now, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, he, he dropped down to master, but He's one of the best support players in the entire world, and he's taught he taught me a lot. Uh, and so, you can see his Morgana numbers are still pretty good. Uh, he loves to play Morgana. Uh, Four point one is like right at the bottom end of that really good range. And then you can see all the other support mains that he support players he plays. Janna, he's got two point six deaths. Trundle, three point six deaths. Nautilus, four point eight. So that's kind of the common thread with all of his. And he jungles and he uh, jungles middle obviously, but um, the common thread here is always low death count so keep that in mind whenever you're playing any champion and learning something new is i want to keep my death count really low and you can see comparatively you've got seven and eight point eight point nine over 16 games is insanely high right like you should never die more than five times in a game and if you do that means you're just playing too aggressively or you're positioning wrong so we just need to get you in the mindset of every time you go into a game now you're going to be super like your focus is going to be on how do i avoid death okay yeah. It's going to be helping helping my ADC second, but first, 
focus on yourself. You know, it's good that you're a support player, but your job as a support is not only to just kind of help your AD carry be able to free farm into like the late game. It's to make sure that <clears throat> your lane doesn't get snowballed, right? And it you don't die. And Morgana's an engage and disengage, right? You've got you got your ultimate that can either engage or you got your ultimate that if you pop that and say you're getting ganked by three, level six, right? Yep. Um, and you're like kind of even, your lane's even and, and it's right in the middle. Um, and their jungler comes in and ganks uh, and you're all level six. As you're running backwards, just pop your ultimate, right? Because they can't chase you in your ultimate, right? So they immediately, it just becomes this zone tool. That just like yeah, you have to use your ultimate, but as soon as you pop it, you know either they have to make a decision to all in you and kill you before the two seconds are up, or they just scatter, right? And at level six, they usually don't have enough burst, so your 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 um, ultimate becomes in either I'm gonna you know we're gonna engage on them and kill them, and it's our jungler coming in, or it's their jungler coming in, and I can just disengage by hitting R. And they can't ch chase or kill either of us. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> her kit is awesome to, to be able to, um, you know, think about like cool ways to be able to use the abilities um, <clears throat> and just like get in the habit of thinking at least five seconds into the future, right? Like start thinking about things like what's going to happen if I do this or if I do that. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think that's going to be a, a really good way to, to stop these numbers. Like 15 is unacceptable. Okay, I, I don't know why you bought a Lich Bane, uh, first of all. Also, yeah, let's talk about your builds too. Um, and this is kind of like – so by the way, 15 and 10, like you should never have double-digit deaths ever. Like unless the game's over like 50 minutes. Um, in a 40 minute, a 30-minute game, a 10 is too many. In a, in a, in a 40-minute game, 15 is way too much because like, you know, there's so – like – how do you die that many times? Even if like the enemy team is super fed, you just you got to stay away from them, right? And if they have a CC, you've got a black shield. I mean, there's no like almost no way that you should ever die, right? Um, so uh, I want to go through how I'm going to structure this lesson. Is I just kind of want to go through all of your your pre-game stuff, like after we go through your OPGG. I want to go through like your pre-game setup. Uh, and then just talk a little oh, okay. bit. Okay, so that fifteen and nothing game. Which uh, one? That was a game where the Jin DC, and it was just me in the lane, and then I ended up abandoning lane. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I just I was like I was like why is that so high? It's never been that high, and I looked and I was like oh that's right. Now. Well, this one's two and sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. That you're right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to like, you know, say you're like bad. Right? I'm just saying like, you know, it's just these games shouldn't – try not to let this ever happen again. And, and the way we're going to do that is to just focus on playing safer. That's It's really simple. I'll make it that simple, okay? Um, and then secondly, let's talk about um, your basic support um, kind of setup and mindset going into the game. And I, I kind of want to get, like, okay, like, just because, you know, I don't want to spend, I could spend six hours here with you, but I just kind of want to spend, I don't want to give you, I don't want to overload your brain, okay? I want to give you yeah. a few things that you should work on over the next couple weeks. And then once you feel really comfortable, then if you want, you can come back and we, we can get you on to like step two and step three and step four and like slowly get you better and better at this game. But it's not going to be like, I'm glad you're like, you know, looking for help, you know, on local co coaching, but like, just know it's not going to be like an overnight process, you know, like getting better at this game is it's taken me a little while. Like I started playing in like, uh, I started playing season one, but like I was, I only played normals and I played like maybe 50 games a year and just like with my friends for fun. And I started taking yeah. this game seriously back in August of 2015. And, uh, I went from silver to platinum, uh, relatively quickly and I'm still kind of climbing, but, um, like I've been learning a lot in the meantime. Like, like I learned a lot about how to get from silver up to platinum and what it takes. And to be honest, it doesn't take much. Like I, I honestly think almost anybody, no matter how like smart or whatever you are, can get to platinum. It's not difficult. And the only like there's so many very simple kind of like uh, like roadblocks and headwinds that people. Uh, kind of succumb to when they think about like 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 you said at the beginning like I don't think I'm good enough for ranked well ranked is a ladder just like normal 
where, um, yeah, like the worst of the worst get to bronze five and the best of the best get to challenger. So there's no, it's all relative. So there, you shouldn't think about it. Like, by the way, don't ever play normals ever again. Um, normals are just kind of where people mess around and it kind of doesn't help you understand or get better. You know what I mean? Cause people are like playing okay. off rolls or people playing champs that they're not good at. So to be able to like properly gauge where you are in your skill level, just always play ranked because there's no downside. You can't fall any further, right? So just yeah. just to keep these stats, you know, the best they can be. Like you, you see all these normal games here, like none of these stats are going into this number, right? So this should actually be higher than it is, right? Um, but since you're playing normals instead of ranked uh, and this only catches ranked, it's not going to be there. So my point is even if your stats look atrociously bad, who cares? No one cares. No one's looking at your stats. You know, like I'm looking at it now. But like nobody, nobody else is gonna be like, holy shit, you know what I mean? Like game over sucks. Like that's not like what people are ever gonna think because it's bronze five. Everyone kind of is just learning at this, at this you know point. And even if you get into like the silvers or the golds and people tell you you suck, just laugh at them because they suck too. Like people in gold and silver are terrible. They, I, I can, yeah. I can show you so many. Like I record my games and I put them on YouTube just so like I can rewatch them and have them there kind of permanently and get them off of my desktop because they like pretty big files. And it's kind of a good way to be able to like log my games. So if you just go to my channel, which is can't beat this me, which is the name of my um, my YouTube ch or my um, coaching thing, it's my in-game name. So I've got like my old sessions, right? So I've got like top lane is what I've usually done, and this is kind of general game knowledge with the bronze three I did this last week, which is, this might be a good one for you to watch. Um, but you can see some of the games that I've played. I got a Soraka game, I got a couple Morgana games, um, but. Uh, the point is like these are all gold like I've got some mid gold some high gold I might have a platinum game in here too yeah uh, but you can see some of the mistakes that are made in these games are the same exact mistakes that you're seeing in bronze um, okay. it's it's there's almost no difference and and my, the point when I when I kind of talk through these games is to kind of point out like here's uh here let me give just give you a really quick example so uh, Jogath I'm playing, I'm a Teemo main, by the way, so don't judge me, but um, <clears throat> uh, I love Teemo. I think he's like a super misunderstood champ. Um, people hate him. I, I, I think I have almost every one of his skins except his newest ones. Oh, God. Why? That's awesome. Why do you have all the skins? Because I think, I think Teemo's a really, really champ. Teemo's so easy. He's like Soraka of the top lane. He's just like so easy. It's like you don't have to think about anything but the game. Which is why I love playing him. Is like you. I wanted to get better at the game and not like mechanical. I don't want to like have to be like a Riven or a Zed or a Yasuo and have to worry about like timing these abilities and all this shit. Like I'm not smart enough right now to do that or be good enough. <laughs> like once I get to Diamond, if I get to Diamond Five this season, which I'm hoping to get to, that's when I'm gonna start. Like that's my kind of like goal to to kind of reassure myself that I understand this game inside and out. And I can take a champ like Teemo to Diamond, right? Yeah. So if I can well, take... Okay, so I watch, I watch a lot of Calcet, mainly because I'm here in Korea. Okay. And I knew I was coming to Korea, so I started like looking up Korean streamers, and I found Calcet, I don't know, a year, a year and a half ago. Yep. And he took... He's a Master Yi yep. main. And he took Master Yi from brand new to Diamond. Oh yeah, no. Uh, you can take li literally any champion in the entire game into Challenger. You can you can do it. So uh, one of the st other streams that I watch because he's NA as well. So it's actually awesome that you're in Korea. By the way, uh, what are you doing out there? By the way, I meant to ask you. Oh, uh, I'm here for work. I'm in the Navy. So oh, I'm that's cool. Here in the in doing work. So. Oh, that's cool, man. Um, well, yeah. you're at like you're at like the mecca of league. Okay, that's like if you want to get good. You fucking you play league in Korea, right? And like you watch so, Koreans and how that you go to a PC bong and you stand behind a Korean player, and yeah. like literally a gold a gold level Korean player is a diamond level NA uh, player. So like even it's, if you're watching, yeah, you can learn a lot just by like how they hold. Very true. Yeah, I mean, Actually, just I looked into I looked into getting a Korean account. Know, just a, oh yeah, just like one. good yeah. luck. Yeah, good luck. I I would say that. I mean, I don't know if your ping uh, your ping would be better or your connection would be better because the servers oh, might be, be so closer. Much <clears throat> I would I would do I that. Right now, 
to be honest, if you're if you're right now sits about like 105, 100, between 105, 150 on bad games. Oh no, that's like uh, unplayable. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that's that's yeah. hard. That's harsh. Like I would say, uh, you know, if your ping is gonna improve, like you don't want your ping. My ping is 19 because I live in Chicago, so I'm like on top of the servers. But if you are um, in Korea, just open up a Korean account. I mean, you're bronze five NA. You're gonna be bronze five there too. I mean, there's no difference, and <clears throat> the only difference is the players are gonna be a little bit better. Um, okay, so funny story. You can't open a Korean account unless you have a visa or you have. A, oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they take leagues super serious. <laughs> that's awesome, though. I like that, though. That's actually kind of awesome. Uh, but okay, fine, yeah. whatever. Play play an A. I mean, it's no big deal. But if you have a, the option to, that that'd be awesome if you play. So anyway, yeah. I brought this guy up, Ivan Pavlov. He's ranked forty seven NA. He's the forty seventh ranked player in the world. He is a Timo main. Look at this. One hundred sixty one Timo games played. And he's the 47th ranked player in the entire in the entire region, and he only plays Teemo. Uh, and and sometimes he gets forced into other roles like jungle and, and, and support. But like like you can you can get to the top playing anybody. Is my point? You know what I mean? Like don't ever think that you know. And and Yi is one of those those uh, champs. And, and Calcep streams actually awesome, so it's good you watch that. But like Yi is like a hyper carry. You know, if he gets even a little fed, like he can go off. Uh, yeah. Timo is like more of a, uh, you, a thinking man's champ where you can't really go ham on people. It's all about the pokes. So um, my point is that like I just wanted to show you this real quick. It kind of took a little too long to pull this up. But look, so this is a gold four game against the Cho'Gath of the top lane. And like the mistakes that are made like in bronze happen in uh, gold. The difference is like people start to realize Realize the mistakes and then capitalize and, and can, um, uh, uh, you know, make use of the mistakes that are made, right? Like, you can go through with a fine tooth comb each and every game that you play, and you'll be able to spot out all of these really big mistakes. So, um, I want to point this out to you. Uh, Timo is a range champ, and uh, Cho'Gath is not, right? That's yeah. pretty simple stuff, uh, which yeah. means what's the strategy for me? is to uh, whittle him down by poking him as much as I can while avoiding his abilities, right? Level one, he's gonna take Vorpal Spikes. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of walking you through this only just to get, give you an idea of how I break down a game and just kind of how you should also be doing this. But okay, so level one, he takes Vorpal Spikes so he can uh, attack minions at a distance, which also means he does not have any of his other abilities, right? He doesn't have the ground stomp, he doesn't have the silence, um, and he doesn't have the chomp, obviously. Um, so I know that, which means I can really freely uh, attack him without any like worry of CC. Okay, so what? That's my kind of game strategy: is to kind of whittle him down until he gets to about 200 health, and then I can all in and kill him with flash ignite, auto Q, auto thunder lords, and he's dead, uh, guaranteed. So uh, my job is to just. Attack him once, attack him, attack him, attack him, attack him, attack him. So maybe like six or seven auto attacks, and I've got him to where I want him to be. So uh, that's my goal. What's his goal? Uh, what he, sh what should he think, be thinking about? Is I want to, um, uh, I want to um, avoid get, getting poked down to two hundred, right, at all costs. I want to do my best to CS when I can, uh, leech XP while I can. But most importantly, just not die and not get free um, free harass, right? I'm getting free harass. Like, I'm not getting attacked at all except from, from his minions, which is all just minion damage. So um, here's a huge mistake. And this is gold four, by the way. Here's a huge mistake. Uh, he is bloodlusting on this single minion, right? You could see I'm clicking here. Um, and why am I clicking here, do you think? Uh, no. Um, and that's actually a common uh, comment that most people have. Um, so, uh, Vorpal Spikes goes in a straight line, right? So I know his Vorpal Spikes is going to kind of be in this general direction here, right? Okay. I, I'm like way out of the range. I could actually stand over here and still be okay from Vorpal Spikes. The reason I'm, I'm doing this is because I'm looking 15 seconds ahead into the future. So I know that he's made a huge error and that he's walked his champion up to this guy to try and eat him so that he can get the gold and the experience. I know what's gonna happen next. He's level one, he can't stop me. I'm, I'm trying to position myself. Ideally, I'd be like standing here 
and I'm just going to auto attack forever. Um, and this is called attack move. So I'm attacking him and I'm clicking up. You see that? I'm attacking him and I'm clicking up, which means like that cannon where I showed you in that le in, the, in your VOD review was literally yeah. just chasing him and not attacking at all. Uh, that Nasus got zero damage from that cannon. I'm trying to maximize my DPS and damage. So you can see, just by getting that one single CS, it cost him that much life, right? And the reason it cost him that much life was only because I positioned myself like at the most optimal way possible. Does that make sense? Yeah. So these are the things that you want to start thinking about like in bot lane too is when the enemy team, especially in bronze, they absolutely will. Like if a gold player is making that positioning error, you just know that bronze five, they're making that positioning error 50 times in, in the laning phase. Do you know what I mean? So start to think about uh, as you're playing Morgana, like just getting one auto attack in, right? Like if you start spell thieves, you're gonna get gold from that too, right? So your job is to, um, you know, your autos don't do a whole lot of damage, but they, like, they're like they small amounts of poke, and especially against the squishier supports and AD carries, like, it adds up in the end. Like, if, think about, like, um, laning phase, kind of how I just showed you, where um, maybe <clears throat> you see, let's see, uh, okay, so you see this minion getting low, right? And none of the other ones are really that low. So you know he's going to be, and think about the enemy AD carry the same way. Like, you know he's going to go for that minion. So you just have to position yourself to be able to, because look, think about it this way. This is called the trading stance, by the way. This is a concept that's, that's out there. I don't know if you've heard of, but um, they kind of named it trading stance, where you know that they're going to go for this minion, right? And you know that when they attack this minion, they literally cannot simultaneously attack you. So they either have to choose, I'm going to attack him or I'm going to attack the uh, minion and get the last hit okay so what you do is you position yourself right at the edge of his uh, auto attack range right and then you wait until he goes for the last hit and as soon as he goes for that last hit you attack him once right what what occurs in that in that situation is you, you get a free trade you get free damage on him he gets his last hit that he was going to do anyway you know what i mean and there's no room for retaliation because if he last hits and you hit him once and then he uh, refocuses to you and he hits you, that allows you to hit him back. So now you've gotten two auto attacks on him. He's gotten one auto attack on you. And you can kind of see how it stacks. Like theoretically speaking, if you are uh, equal damage and you're like a, you know, um, a Caitlyn against a Caitlyn and you get the first hit, as long as you trade hits, you're going to win that fight, right? Yeah. So that's kind of the theory behind it is like it's free trade, it's free damage, and you get the first hit. Obviously, you're going to be a support hitting in a hitting another support or a support hitting their ADC. So obviously, you're going to get that hit, and then you walk out of their range immediately so that they can't retaliate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I've actually this is about this is my first support um, uh, com um, lesson that I've ever done. Uh, I usually do Teemo or top lane in general. So. And I got, um, I had a tequila tasting last night, so I was, I was really hungover for a couple hours this morning. Uh, so I apologize. <laughs> I am not quite as organized as I would have liked to have been, but uh, I don't have like um, specific timestamps to show you uh, in these games. But let me just pull up um, a Morgana game just to kind of show you a couple of things. Um, I think I have one here somewhere. Uh, do 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 Soraka Timo Timo Soraka. Okay, against the Blitz Crank Asriel, um, real pain in the ass lane. Uh, all right. So. I this, think it's pain in the ass. It's like Thresh. I hate going against a Thresh. Yeah, Thresh is Thresh can be annoying too. But you got Black Shield, so like it's so powerful. All right, so. Uh, you pretty much always want to start Q. I think I start W this game, uh, because I used to be bad. But yeah, this is a really old game. I think this is like mid season five. Yeah, October. This probably won't be instructive. Um, yeah, this is probably better. Oh, actually, I play this top. Anyway, we won't go to the tape just yet. We won't go to the tape just yet. All right, so sorry, a little bit, a little bit uh, out of all over the place here. But um, uh, the things I want I want you to take away from this lesson is first of all to not die, play safer, uh, and then yeah. the stuff that we're going to talk about right now and get into are your before game setup. 
just so I know that you're going into each and every game with the right kind of game plan, if that makes sense. And then you, yeah. then you just have to focus on, okay, how do I win this game now? Instead of like, are my runes and my masteries okay? Are my itemization okay? Um, we're going to take care of all of that right now so you never, ever have to think about it again, okay? So, first of all, runes and masteries are super simple, right? Um, so, champion.gg and pro builds. These are literally the only two websites you'll ever need ever again, okay? Um, so, go into Champion GG, pull up a Morgana, go see what the best players in the world are doing for their runes and masteries, and just copy it. So, go into your, your, uh, your LOL right now, and if you don't have this exact page set up, Magic Pen, Magic Resist, Armor, Ability Power, set it up now. And if you don't have this uh, mastery page with Thunderlord set up, set, set it up now, okay? If you want, uh, just, just, just copy it and, and forget about it, okay? And we'll come revisit this again when you get to gold, all right? But for, okay. but for now, like, <clears throat> I have never changed any runes or any masteries. I literally came to this webpage. This is what I use in my, my setup, and I've gotten to platinum, and I've never even thought twice about it. And it, 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 it literally is something that people overthink. Just, just you can nitpick and, and try and min-max all these little things like, you know, is this getting the extra 5% CDR better than, than doing um, getting merciless and getting increased damage? Is that like, you know, there is situations where one's better than the other, but it's not worth thinking about, right? Like your bronze five, you want to get, we want your fundamentals in order first, right? So let's start thinking about the nitpicky stuff later. Let's get you to the point where like you're, like your the fundamentals should be able to take you through platinum, okay? Um, so that's why I want you to just copy this and forget about it forever. All right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Champion. Champion. Gg. And then secondly, this is a good one too. This is kind of gives you where where some of the the professionals are, um, you know, and and what they're doing with their builds. So let's look at Morgana. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work. Let's look at Morgana. And you can see like Marin games, you got like special games, Gate, Chump John. So like you've got the best players in the world and what are they doing and what are they building and what's a common thread and a common link between a lot of them. Um, obviously like this Marin game was not a support because he started Doran's Ring and um, obviously you never start Doran's Ring as a support. So you know he probably played top lane and because he's got his, or, or mid, because he's got his TP too. So um, make sure you're looking at just the support players when you come to this website. Um, but uh, it's cool because you can see kind of build orders. Like Marin started, Doran's ring two pots, yellow trinket, and then he, he rushed spell thieves. Then he got his lucidity boots. Uh, and then he went into his rod of ages, which then went into Zonia's. And, uh, you know, you can kind of see... The most popular items, uh, Frost Queens, 80% of the games played by Frost Queens. Um, Zonia's, obviously, for obvious reasons, is, is one of her core items. Um, allows you to alt in. Um, do you, did you know Zonia's was a core item, by the way? No. <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, so, so sorry, I just kind of brushed over that because I thought it was pretty, like, common, but, like, uh, Zonia's is a, a must-buy at some point in the game. It could be either your... Uh, second item after Frost Queens or your third item after like a more defensive one if you're losing game. But uh, Zonia's needs to happen as soon as humanly possible because it gives you such a good, amazing stat. Uh, 100 ability power, which is going to synergize with your kit. And then obviously the armor um, against the AD carry that you're going to be in against in lane, right? Uh, or against you know whoever else is AD in the game. But the most important pa part is that unique active is the stasis is... You can alt in, flash alt into the middle of their team, okay? You can literally flash in with no defensive items, just a Zonia's Hourglass, and then as soon as you flash into the center, right? So, like, everyone's grouped five. Imagine this, right? Like, you're on the red side, and you've got um, one, two, three, four, five. So you've got your AD carry, your AP carry uh, mid laner, your your tank top, your tank jungle, and then you're kind of off to the side. Uh, and then they've got their five, and you guys are kind of A-ramming it up in the middle, just kind of trying to play chicken. And you're like, you know what, guys? Like, here we go. We're starting this fight. I'm going to flash in right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit R, 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit R on all five, and then I'm gonna hit Zonia's immediately after. Okay, and you can be ulting while in stasis in Zonia. Did you know that? No. Yeah. So your ult continues to go as you're in Zonia. So you're essentially locking down their entire team, and you're invulnerable at the same time. So their only option is to get the fuck out of there, right? They're like, oh god, we're all gonna be stunned and die. So as they're running away, the rest of your team gets to pick people off. This is the power of Morgana in plus Zonias. And this is why everybody in the world will buy a Zonias on a Morgana, because that alone, it creates that situation where as soon as you get a Zonias, you're looking for like a flash tippers. You know what I mean? You're, that's like your your yeah. bread and butter. You're looking for a flash engage, or even if they position poorly, save your flash and just walk right into the middle and, and just hit R and then hit three or two or whatever your Zonias is on. And it's literally f a free team fight one because they have to scatter. They can't stand in the same spot. They either all have to move backwards as a team where if you flash behind some of the players, they're still not going to be... That's the beauty of... Um, it's kind of hard to do on this map, so I'm just going to do a blank one. So that is the beauty of the... Um, oh, let's go green. Uh of Morgana's uh, ultimate is that, okay, let's say that these are the five players on the enemy team and yep. you flash in right here and you alt yourself uh, and you alt yourself you've got them bound, right? So now this guy can run backwards, their AD carry this guy, their AP carry mid lane can run out, right? Because you're standing still you can't move. They can run yep. out but these guys it's a little dicier because maybe they don't get out in time, right? Because like you could be just on the outside of your circle and still get stunned. So the only option for the frontline guys are to run outside of the circle some way, right? Towards your team is like fucking suicide, right? So like they don't want to go that direction. So they're going to want to either go straight sideways, which again is suicide because your team can just come in and pick them off easily. Or it's like kind of kiting back a little. But my point is like it's not as efficient as running straight back, right? But yeah. and, and this is kind of like a micro concept, but it's important to understand is what what you create here with this ultimate and Zonia's effect is that these guys while they're running back can't do any damage. They can't help anybody who's in the front line. So what they're going to um what you're going to want your team to focus on is, is killing these three guys. One of those three guys, right? Whichever one does not get away, or whichever one positions the, the, the least well, right? It's usually kind of this, the, either the tank in the, in the front or, or one of like the support players who don't have much, um, you know, is squishy or whatever. Whoever the case may be, the point is it opens up so many options for your team, you know what I mean? So Zonia's is a core, core item, and so is Frost Queen's, obviously. Um, you start Spell Thieves so that you can get to the, your Frost Queen's claim. And you get the spooky ghosts, and that, that's always a nice um, slow. Um, Sightstone, obviously, is a must-buy. Um, yeah. You always go in the order of... Um, you always go in the order of level 1 boots, right? Or go towards your Sightstone. So if you're... The way I decide which w direction I'm going to go into uh, is... And again, I'm getting ahead of myself. I got to gonna not do this but I'm just gonna tell you this anyway uh, the way I decide which direction to go to is first things first in my brain uh, I will buy my uh, sightstone or I will buy my boots first level uh, level two boots first right it's one or the other okay yeah I will always I will never buy for I will never upgrade to frost queen's claim before I have a sightstone or before I have level two boots um, oh. never ever 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 because your mobility is way more important than getting AP and the, the, the two ghosts, right? Being able to run faster, two lane, being able to get to mid lane faster, being able to get around the map faster to ward to D ward is your number one priority as a support, okay? When you approach these games, your job is to control vision yeah. on the map, okay? Your job is to know exactly where every single person on the map is. The jungler is supposed to do that too, but you are like the secondary eyes and ears of the jungler. Because your, your job in lane isn't quite as intensive as an AD carry because you don't have the last hit, 
and your your job isn't quite as intensive as a mid laner because uh, it's a one v one, and they have to worry about the jungler too, and having all of these lanes like you know uh, keep kept track of, and then top lane is kind of a one v one, and top lane you should be very good at uh, knowing what's happening on the map too, but they're kind of a lonely island where it's like nobody really comes up there right very often. Yeah. So. As a support player, your job is to always have your eye on this mini map at all times, okay? You need to make sure you're understanding where is the enemy jungler, right? Like, is the enemy jungler here? That means that we can play uh, a free fight down here in the bot lane. Um, <clears throat> is their jungler, you know, have you gotten a ward deep ward in here? And you, you're seeing their jungler now come in and take their blue buff. That's huge information, right? Like if, if you're playing from uh, um, from here, from the blue side, and you're able to see uh, their jungler coming, like you know that they're going to be coming down here right after they take blue. That's huge information, and if, if you're staring at your mini map at all times, you'll be able to see that happen, and you'll be able to anticipate in the next thirty seconds to a minute, we're probably going to see the jungler sh jungler show up. That means we should probably back off a little bit, yeah. right? Until we're like, okay, we see the jungler pass by our, um, and usually we'll have, uh, you know, a ward in front of dragon. We'll, we'll usually see um, either him come down to gank, or we'll see him come down to gank, realize that he's been spotted by a ward, dick around for five minutes, you waste their time, and then he goes back up to mid lane because that's probably a better opportunity. But either way, he passes by this ward. So you know as soon as he passes by the ward going in this direction, uh, you can go back to being more aggressive, right? But the, but the way all of this kind of happens and the way that you, you start that out is by doing what? Warding, right? And then yeah. using those wards to give you information. So number one, your mentality going into these games are to have vision the best of your ability. So from either, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk blue side, right? So this is gonna be where, where Game Over is playing. And yeah. uh, you're playing Morgana. You always, if you are, um, uh, you know, at, at levels one through, let's call it five, where you don't quite have your sight stone yet, you're going to want to um, basically pink ward, or pink ward, uh, you want to um, yellow ward this brush so you can see a gank's coming, and on your very first back, pink ward right here on this brush, okay? Okay. Every time you play... Any support from now onwards, the, on your first back, you're gonna buy for on blue side. You're gonna buy a pink ward, okay? And you're gonna th you're gonna walk exactly this route, okay? And you're gonna throw the pink ward as close to the edge of this brush as you can towards your base. Do you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Like this, yeah. is, it's the tri brush. You want to ward as close to the edge as you can, because that means that they have to walk further to be able to kill it, right? They if you put it kind of on on if you put the ward here. They could kill it from here, but since you put it here, they have to kill it from here. Does that make sense? And that yeah. that little that little bit of um, walking makes a difference. Um, so um, if you get it on your first back and you walk in this uh, exact path to get there, they will not see that you bought a pink ward and that you placed it in this brush. So they won't know it's there until they face check it or that they ward it. Okay. So I don't know if you knew that or not, but the enemy cannot see your inventory until you physically walk into their purview. Okay, did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Okay, so that's a very important fact. So that's the reason why people, that's why I tell you to walk this exact path, is because unless they have this worded here, uh, or like this worded somehow, they're not gonna know that you have a pink. And even if it is worded, by the way, at bronze, they're not gonna look for that. They're not gonna look at your inventory and be like, oh, she's got a pink, it must be here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can literally, you know, in bronze, go like that and ward it. You know what I mean? Like, and they won't, <laughs> and they won't even know that you had a pink because, like, they're not looking at your inventory ever. They're not even looking at their own inventory. Uh, so, but just to get in the in good habits, I want you to do this every time. Okay, this is a habit that will get that people in diamond and challenger use. Okay, diamond master challenger. Okay, they buy pink wards, they walk this path, and you can watch any high level stream. They do this every time, and it's. It's something you can start doing now and continue to do for the rest of your games on the blue side. Uh, pink this brush, and it's, uh, in the bronze games, you'll be surprised how long that thing lasts. Um, 
Also on your first buy, depending on how much gold you have, you want to either start building towards your site stone, uh, if you've got less than 800 and you can't just outright buy it, uh, spend the 400 on the, um, on the ruby crystal, and um, you know, maybe buy a couple of pots, but just save up for it, you know what I mean? Buy half of it and then buy the other half on your next pack. Um, if you've got enough and you've got the 800 gold, absolutely your very first buy should always be the site stone because right. that's gonna allow you to never die in the game, okay? Um, let's talk about how Sight Stone alone is the item that's gonna allow you to never die ever again in this game. Um, once you're past this point of, okay, you know, my first back, I can only buy a pink, I can only buy a ruby crystal and a couple of pots, you're gonna pick this brush, you're gonna yellow this brush, or um, you're gonna yellow up by dragon would be a much better one if you've got the pink because you're, you kind of already see enough uh, with your pink ward. Um, but if you can get a yellow here, you can you can already see this um, this entrance better, uh, and, and you won't need a yellow ward here at all. So um, let's talk about after your first purchase of the sight stone. Um, there's going to be from blue side. Let's talk about um, the most important parts. Uh, hopefully, you'll have your pink ward here. Um, the most important, but if not, and you didn't buy a pink ward. This is a, 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 ver, um, a very important place to ward, um, to know that if their jungler tries to try anything sneaky, or mid laner, um, you'll have that warded and you have this vision. Um, that's number one, that's your first ward. Second ward, always, with your side stone is here, right in front of dragon, okay? So you've got vision of dragon, so they can't, yeah. they can't sneak it. You've got vision of any mid laner trying to come through, right? And you've got vision of any jungler trying to come. So this is a very powerful ward. This is a very powerful ward. So when you first buy your sight stone, your, your path will be this. Your path will be through here. And as you're walking through the tri brush, ward the tri brush, and then you walk up here, and then you ward here, and then you walk back to lane, okay? Um, if they've got you pushed up to here, obviously don't do that. Because if they have this, that, if, if that's the case, they'll typically, um, as you're trying to walk through here, um, they will have this warded before you will. So they'll watch you do that, and they'll just peel off and kill you. Okay. Yeah. So obviously there are certain situations. Don't just do it blindly. Just kind of understand: Are you safe enough to do this? If you're not safe enough, then you only need this ward anyway. Because um, even if you do, if, even if they do have people coming in this way, it doesn't matter because they'll just be under tower. Um, but these are the two most important wards on your blue side uh, to kind of allow you to have all the vision you're ever going to need, right? Unless you've got like a, uh, a Vi or someone, or like a Shaco who can jump, right? Like through this wall, then you're going to want a ward here as well. So depending on the jungler, like you, if you've okay. got junglers who've got uh, jump abilities over walls, like a Rek'Sai even, even yeah. with like a Rek'Sai, like this might be an okay, but like against a Shaco, the reason I say ward here instead of here uh, is because you'll be able to see him go from here into his invisibility. You know what I mean? Like he, he's visible here, but not visible here. So this ward here is not helpful because if he's visible here and he jumps, this ward's useless. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you ward here, um, anyone who tries to jump like a fiddlesticks who ults in whoever like he's they're usually going to stand here and wait for the opportune moment so this is why this ward's awesome is because he'll be standing on top of your ward thinking that he's like being sneaky meanwhile you're literally pinging the shit out of it and being like hey ad carry look 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 he's here and be careful because he's going to try and come in let's waste a lot of his time and just play safe you know what i mean they'll stand there for like 10 minutes because even in bronze they're not going to be like i'm standing on a ward what the hell you know what i mean so yeah. I use my third sightstone ward as kind of a flex. So, to, so this is a, a must, and this is a must. And then your third ward uh, could either go into lane somewhere, like, okay, I'm gonna ward right here um, at the very edge of the top brush, so I can either yeah. see their jungler coming in, or I can uh, at least have vision of, of what's going on over here while we're like, you know, fighting and stuff over here. Um, or uh, if, if you've got like, a, the lane frozen here in the middle, 
Um, you kind of want to be able to just walk up, um, walk up this way in either ward, this brush, or right here. Okay, so just okay. just make the last word that you have either save it for a time that you're going to need it for something, or use it as like a flex word where it's like okay, depending on the jungler, I could put it here, I could put it here. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. Do you have any questions about any of that? No. And do you understand how that's going to save your life forever? And you should <laughs> yeah, literally exactly. never get dove or never get ganked and never. You should always know at all times as soon as a site zone is bought where people are going to come, and there should never be a time like. If you've got all of your wards placed and it, it's been three minutes and you've got no wards left and your wards die, then then that's a problem. And that's when you have to – don't spend too much time in lane, right? Don't spend five to seven minutes in lane because you'll you're, unless you've got a pink, your vision is going to die and then you'll be susceptible um, to ganks. So sometimes it is acceptable to just leave, leave your AD carry, say, look, I'm going to go buy. I've got 1,200 gold. I'm going to go buy a bunch of stuff and – you know, refresh my wards so that I can make a safe again. Just play safe for 30 seconds. It's not that big of a deal. If your AD carry gets butt hurt over it, just ignore him and leave anyway. Okay? Because like, you're yeah. doing him a favor, right? You're you're making sure that he's safe and you're safe. Like, yeah, getting him an extra wave or two um, is super greedy and short sighted because that's a, maybe like 150 gold. Where if you're like, if this is all darkness. Like you, you can die in that meantime just for those two or three extra waves, which is not worth it at all, you know. So, just tell them to suck it up, and you'll be right back. Um, but hopefully, you just won't get any flame. So anyway, that's blue side. All right. Let's talk about now if you are on the red side, okay, and you're playing uh, your Morgana. Again, this is your number one word now is is right here. Okay, so the nice thing about um, playing on the red side is that there's only really two ways to get to you, right? Uh, which means you don't, and especially if you're pushed up and, and, and you're losing, um, like if, you, if you've got it frozen right here, it's fine. You don't actually need this warded, right? You don't, you don't need a ward here. You don't need a ward here. It's not, it's, I mean, like you don't need a ward here for sure, right? Because who cares? Like you're pushed up to your tower. All you care about is, is a jungler maybe coming into our jungle, the counter jungle? Is a jungler coming in here to like try and set up a dive? So just this ward alone right here allows you to have all the information you need. So when, okay. when you're walking two lane, like on your first back with your AD carry, you walk this route, you ward here while your AD carry goes straight to lane, and your AD carry is going to get there before you, which is fine. Uh, and you ward this spot right here in front of Dragon, and then you walk back through, and it's fine because you're, you've got the lane frozen right here, and you've got all the information you need from one single ward. And now you've got two wards in your inventory uh, to use how you how you want and need. And if you're really getting crushed, you, you're going to want to ward right here, right, in that brush, so you have vision of this brush. Because usually their support's being a dick and just kind of like if it's a blitz crank or a thresh or something and they're just trying to like look for good pulls. So you ward that, you'll have vision of them. You'll be able to see when they're trying to pull, how they're trying to position. You'll have your black shield ready, etc. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you've still got one now in your, in your chamber. you still got one ward left because you've got one in the river, you got one here, and you're, and you're still completely safe. So even when you're losing, you're still kind of winning. Okay, so you always want to look at your situation and think, how can I turn this losing situation into a, a, a winning situation? And how can I set myself up uh, to, to at least, if not win the lane, like lose the least amount, okay? So that's me talking about, it looks like an arrow. That's actually a G, what the hell? Um, I swear I know English. Okay, so it still <laughs> looks like an arrow. Uh, okay, so, um, all right, so let's talk about um, when you're winning, or at least going even, right? So here we've got things in the middle, um, or even if it's not, let's say let's say we're winning a little bit, and we've we've shoved the wave into their tower. Um, their tower has killed all the minions, and it's reset. And you know when um, a minion wave is reset from shoving into a tower, it's never going to reset back to the exact center of the lane. I don't know if you knew this or not. But when you reset into, when you shove uh, a wave into a tower and you let the tower kill it and reset it, it will always reset kind of a little bit closer to their side. Okay? okay. So start to notice that in your games. You'll ne it'll never be in the center, it'll always be just closer to theirs. 
But what does that set up? And this is this is called um, kind of uh, minion wave management or minion wave dynamics. Um, what happens uh, at the very start of the game is both minions arrive at the center of the lane exactly at the same time. And what's supposed to happen is um, if you left it untouched for the whole game, it should just stay in this middle spot forever, right? Theoretically. Um, but obviously that's not going to happen because we've got people and they're playing against each other. Um, and when one shoves further than the other, uh, obviously like you kill all the minions on theirs and you've still got a whole wave of minions, like pretend that this is a scenario that exists. It's usually in practice not exactly like this, but you've got your whole minion wave that you have now crashing into their tower. So now they've got uh, maybe their ADC and their support are uh, attacking the minions while the tower is attacking minions. So it's gonna, it's gonna kill that wave while their next wave comes in. But your next wave is also gonna come in. And since it stalls uh, their minion wave for like maybe a second or two because it's helping to kill what the tower and their AD carrying support are trying to kill, right? Since it yeah. stalls their minion waves for just a fraction of a second, that's what creates um, this where your minion wave, it's gonna be a delay of their minions getting to the middle of the lane while yours have no delay, so that yours will walk a little bit further than middle. Okay, yeah. does, that, does that make sense, how that happens? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now, what's gonna happen on the next wave? So say this wave comes and it's crashed and you guys are both uh, free farming your lanes uh, and nobody's pushing one way or the other and it's just frozen. Um, and you're all just last hitting, what's going to happen is the opponent's wave is now going to reach this wave faster than your opponent, your uh, side's minion waves, okay? And what can you imagine happens from that? A slow push. Because yeah. since their minions arrive first, they're going to be doing more damage to your minions than your minions can do to their minions. So even though you're in a really, really unfavorable spot, like this is the absolute worst spot to be if you're playing red side, because they're close to their tower, they're safe, and uh, you're susceptible to being ganked, right? So ideal situation is for you guys to be winning and for you guys to have the lane frozen right here. That This is like best case scenario, okay? Because you're close to your tower and you can't be dove, but you're also winning. So you can start to zone them off of, of, of the wave and you can, uh, if you're really stomping them out, like this is what you want to do is kind of create this zone where they can't do anything, right? Then you just completely shut the game down and it's over and it's awesome. So um, when you're in this situation, it's not all bad because what what is all bad is if your AD carry is like relentlessly attacking. So from now onwards, I want you to, and I look, I know this is a lot of information and this is kind of like stuff that's really, things that are people think about at like really, really high elos. But it's important to get in the habit of knowing now. I don't want to like you know give you stuff that is is like avoid giving you stuff that's pertinent that you can use in your games. So just think about this and get into the habit of knowing that this exists. Of this is even though frozen here, as long as your AD carry is not just relentlessly attacking them, it's going to set up a slow push. So in the next minute to a minute and a half, in the next two waves, um, you're going to have if you're just last hitting the wave perfectly frozen here. Okay, in the next two waves, this is inevitably going to be here, no matter what, unless your AD carry does something to stop that, which means like relentless. So I do this in my games too, in gold and platinum, is a lot of AD carries even then have no idea what what wave management is, and they're just like I want to last, I just want my CS, so I'm just going to attack, 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 attack. So just ping them back. So ping them once or twice, you know, like the uh, alert ping, and just type in chat. Um, let push or let it push back to you uh, and hopefully they understand and if they don't then just kind of you know do your best you know like you can't control other players that's the only downside of the bot lane at low elos awesome. most people don't understand these dynamics and it's a problem um, but besides that whole um, point and I'm glad I'm recording this so you can kind of rewatch all the stuff that we talked about if you ever want to talk uh, watch it again um, yeah, but um, and that's kind of the reason I record it but so okay um, now, secondly, say you're, you've got pushed up here and you, you, you know, you're waiting that minute, minute and a half to get your um, slow push in order, you're still vulnerable in that minute, minute and a half. 
So obviously this is a ward that you're gonna want. Uh, very important. Never pink it though, because it's too easy. It's like you always want like a pink here if you're winning. So uh, on your first back, um, this is my kind of, uh, from blue side we know what to do with our pink, right? It's this brush every time, right? Yeah. From red side, you're still gonna buy the pink on your first back, uh, and your pink is either gonna go here, okay? For your mid laner and your jungler, okay? It gives you all of this vision, and it gives it to you uh, for 100% of the time, because their enemy jungler almost never face checks this brush, almost never, okay? Yeah. So this is a fantastic pink ward spot. And the only reason you're not gonna, that this is uh, what we call the defensive pink ward spot, because you're gonna put your pink ward there if you're losing your lane, okay? If you're winning your lane, uh, your pink ward will go right here, okay? Because this is defendable. So if, if, if you're always pushing up to their tower or you're always frozen here or you're waiting for a split push, how are they gonna kill this pink ward even if they know it's there? They can't even get to it, right? Um, if they try and like get come this way, you guys can just rotate up and defend it, right? And kill their support or jungler or whoever tries to kill it. And, and most of the time, since they're always pushed, they're not even gonna know it's there. So it's like a free 100% of the time vision of that brush and anyone who's coming into this river. Problem is, if you're kind of shoved in a tower, even if you see them coming from the pink ward, it's kind of too late. So that's why this ward is still kind of mandatory because if you see them coming from here, you've got plenty of time to peel, peel back, right? So um, if you're ahead, this is your pink ward spot. If you're behind, this is your pink ward spot. But it is unacceptable to not buy a pink ward, okay? It's 75 gold. Yeah, it might set your build back 75 gold, but that's nothing compared to like the positivity that can come, right? Like you, you'll deny deaths and you'll get kills. So it's just totally worth it. I think pink wards are so OP, I love it. So those are your, that's your pink ward. Um, uh, that's the way you think through pink wards. But each way is you can either uh, walk this way to pink ward and then this way back to lane uh, if you're losing. Or you can go your standard path of uh, either you can, if, if you got it. So obviously this is all situational. So if you don't have a ward here, you put a sight stone ward there. And on your way back to lane, you put your pink ward here. Uh, or if you've already got your ward here in the river, you can be uh, sneaky just like you could on this side. And you walk to just right here and you can pink from over the, over the ledge. Okay. Yeah. And they won't be yeah, able to. Yeah, I, I have a question. Yeah. Should I ever go like the sweeping trinket to Oracle as a support? Uh, so you always, always, always take Oracle alteration as a support 1,000% okay. of the time. You I are. Think so. You never, ever take blue. Ever, ever, ever. Because the only, like, your team is banking on the fact that you are the main sweeper and the main pinker on the team. Like you cannot rely on your jungler or your mid lane or your top lane or especially your AD carry. Like God forbid an AD carry buys a pink ward. Like it's <laughs> like, you know, like it, having two pinks is like, if you ever see an AD carry buy a pink ward and put it down somewhere, immediately friend them after the game and duo with them forever. Because like, that is like one of my favorite things ever is when AD carries understand the importance of vision. And it's funny to see like challenger level AD carries who are so selfish and solo queue and don't buy pink wards or don't focus on like if you open up a sweeping ward on this brush, you like the or, or if it like what's good is like Illusion, right? If Illusion's got a double shot on an ability. So if you're standing in this brush here and you see the enemy ward right at the tip, all you have to do is attack it once and Illusion has to just like dash towards it and they just kill the ward before it has time to go into stealth. That's why like having a Lucian AD carry is actually pretty awesome because you guys can kill wards really quickly, but he has to be have a good reaction time and you have to be on the same page, etc. But so many players just aren't, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, long rant for no reason. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. My point is um, you always want to um, – as soon as you get sight zone, by the way, I don't know if you're doing this, but look, you've got a sight zone and you still got a yellow trinket. This is bad. As soon as you buy sight stone, the second you buy sight stone, you're buying your red trinket. Okay, you're buying you're buying this here, the sweeping lens. Okay, because this is worthless. You don't need a one minute yellow ward. What's more important is having the ability because you've got your three um, sight zone wards that are three minutes long each. You want to be able to clear out um, 
and and uh, sweep. Like if you're on blue side, if you don't have a pink here, uh, or that you know you went to back and and they knew the pink was there for ten minutes and they came in and killed the pink ward. Usually when they killed your pink ward, they're gonna replace it with their own. So it's fine if they kill the pink because you're gonna be in base and you're gonna see it happening. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna buy one more pink ward. You're gonna walk to lane this way. You're gonna sweep first, right? You're gonna see the ward that they placed. You're gonna kill the ward and then you're gonna put the pink down. And they're not gonna know that you did it. They're gonna they're gonna think that you know oh shit you know my wards killed. They probably just re warded it with one of their uh, sightstone wards, but they don't know that it's a pink because they couldn't see your inventory. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's that's another habit to get into. Um, but <clears throat> make sure you buy this as soon as humanly possible. Really, really important to make sure you deny vision at all times of the game. If you have, uh, you want this to be on cooldown at all times, okay? You should never have this off cooldown. As soon as it's off cooldown, look for something to sweep. Because denying vision, like imagine, you know what I mean? Like imagine you're playing... Yeah. Uh, over here and like you're, you're playing against a smart player who can um, who recognizes that this is such a pivotal ward and they go your their their support player before getting to lane walks over here sweeps it kills your ward and f they freeze it here and they're behind you have to take the time to leave lane to reward it or if you're out of wards you have to literally just stand back here with what you should be doing which unfortunately at bronze people don't do what you should be doing is if they kill this ward you guys have to peel away, and, and you, if you can't reward, you have to run away, and you have to wait until the lane pushes back to you, or uh, you, you run the risk of you know messing around down here with no vision and just getting easily ganked. So yep. the, re the way that that's set up is literally one thing, and that's just by sweeping right here. You know what I mean? So as much as I say these wards are important, uh, killing the wards there are, are equally as important. So. Uh, say you're playing blue side and you've got your, your two core wards. Um, as soon as you place this ward here, go ahead and throw a red trinket down or like, like go ahead and sweep this area. Uh, and a lot of times you'll see a ward there as well because people know that this is a very important ward spot. Um, and maybe you'll get a dragon out of it later. Maybe you'll get like, a, um, you know, a clear the jungle path, a clear path for your jungler to come gank. So anyway, I mean, I can, you know, you understand the pros and cons of, of sweeping and, and warding, but I just want to drill it into your brain just because, you know, I, I know that there's a few points that you weren't aware of. I just want to say it just in case you do or don't know. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I know we've been talking for a while. I don't know if you have like a place to go or something to do, but um, do you have like an end time, like a hard stop time? No, I don't have a hard stop time. Okay. Uh, Real quick, can yeah. you do me a favor? Can you try and sign on to League? It's not letting me. Um, I was signed on to League, and it's doing weird things. So let's go ahead and yeah, something might be <laughs> something might be wrong with it. Yeah, um, that's what I'm thinking. All right, let's see what happens. Maybe there's like a new patch or something that they're trying to put through. Sometimes they, they for yeah, there's a new patch. They're they're forcing everyone offline so that, that you have to update the client. There's uh three files, so there there might be a hot fix or an actual oh no, patch I guess it's patch six point two that's going live right now. That just didn't that just go didn't that just go live like two days ago? <clears throat> Maybe. it might be a hot fix then. That's probably what it is. It's probably a hot fix. But for me, I I don't know if I've closed and opened my client in the last two days. So it might just be forcing you if you haven't done it. So. Nope, it's still not letting me on. That's weird, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why, maybe it's a connection issue for you then. Or, no, it shouldn't be because we're still talking on Skype, so that's weird, but I don't know. Let's see if, like, I mean, I'm still just in the, let's see if I'm able to sign in. Accept, accept. Yeah, I haven't actually logged in yet, so maybe. Uh, where where problem causing the logic to fail or working on a fix? <clears throat> One, two, three. Nope. I see it right now. Yep. See, login server same. I'm I'm having the same problem. You have right, a yeah. connection issue. I just want to make sure it wasn't just me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no big deal. Whatever. Well, you know, I'm sure it'll fix it soon. Uh. All right. So, um. Oh, you know what? That's kind of a pain in the ass, actually, because I actually wanted to 
show you some things <laughs> Fuck, in, in, in the quiet. Um, so I'm just going to keep trying. Um, all right, so aside from that, um, let's go into... Uh, I, I think I've given you a good idea, by the way, now. I think you've got a good idea of your kind of general game plan and knowledge uh, of yeah. how you're going to play the first kind of six levels when you're um, in, and what you want to be focusing on, which is, you know, what happens in lane and not dying is obviously important, but notice how I've literally not said a word about how you actually play in lane, right? Because that's not as important. Like, being able to outplay each other at bronze is like, you know, it's not it's not like paramount. You know, what's paramount is making sure you don't get ganked. Is making sure you have the proper vision, right? So like, let's get that in order first, and then we can kind of focus on okay, what's going on here that that you're winning or losing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's 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 my kind of thought for you, and that, that and my hope for you is to just make sure we have everything around it, everything around your uh, micro game, uh, in order. And then we can focus on your micro game. Let's get your macro game in order first. So um, that's just a little bit about kind of your level one, one through three ish. Is uh, first buy will always be Sightstone, and your level one boots. Uh, if I have the money on my, like, say I'm against a certain, and again, this is like, don't ever build your builds um, exactly the same every game. Uh, it should always be situational to a degree. What's not situational is Sightstone and Frost Queen's claim, right? And yeah. your level two boots, um, level two, level one boots, level two boots. You can sometimes change. I never buy Moby boots ever on Morgana, uh, just because Moby boots, in my opinion, aren't as good as Boots of Swiftness. So if you need that extra speed, I would go with Boots of Swiftness over Moby boots um, okay. because you get that, you get more upfront speed than like this like speed that you get when you're out of combat. Like I like the in combat upfront speed better. So that's in my opinion why Moby boots I think are like boots that really no one uses anymore. But um, Swifty boots I'll only buy against maybe a Blitzcrank. Um, but I like typically will buy boots of lucidity every single time, one hundred percent of the time. Okay, because Morgana, like you bought boots of lucidity on Soraka, I actually would never buy ever 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 on Soraka uh, what you want on Soraka is just dead speed so Swifty Boots and then Alacrity upgrade as soon as possible and then you become this like Tasmanian Devil just running around the map nobody can touch you because you're 10 times faster than everyone and you're just healing up every it's like Soraka is just a stupidly broken champ um, but uh, Lucidity Boots on Morgana is amazing because what you want as soon as possible with Morgana is CDR right <clears throat> you don't give two shits about AP. Never, ever, ever buy a death cap on Morgana, okay? Unless it's, even if it's a six item, it just is no, there's no room in Morgana's uh, build for a death cap because you've got Sightstone in one slot, you've got Boots in another spot, and you've got your Frost Queen's Claim in another spot. That's half your, your build is based off of being a support, right? So what do you get? You get 10% cooldown uh, already from your Frost Queen's, and then you get another 10% from uh, your Lucidity Boots, right? Um, which is, which gets you up to 20%, right? And then um, if it's it's like pretty situational. So, so basically just from having your core three items, which are Boots, Sightstone, Frost Queens, you're already up to 20%, like halfway to your 40% cap. You know that, right? There's a 40% cap on CDR. Yeah. 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 So... Um, you're halfway to your cap, and you've got your level two boots already. So you've got your increased movement speed, and you've got all the vision you're going to need, and you've got your uh, your your first item completed. So that is your core first um, uh, first build. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that out for you. I wish I could get into the client. That's really annoying. Um, all right, so Morgana build. Uh, let's go. Core first is your sight stone. And I'm, I'm putting this in order on purpose, but Lucidity Boot. And then Frost Queen's Clan. That is your core on Morgana, okay? Now, <clears throat> um, I would always build Frost Queen's last. 
don't build the AP. Like you might be able, if you want to get away with uh, building the uh, uh, the level two AP thing, uh, I forget what it's called, but the the frost thing, not frost yeah. terrain, but like you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not the amp tome side, but the other side. If you want to buy that for the increased gold income, that's okay. Uh, I do that sometimes before I buy level two boots, but uh, most of the time, especially if I'm playing against a Thresh or against a Blitzcrank, level two boots is is huge uh, because you can dodge their skills got shots easier. Um, so against a an opponent that you need to be faster, i.e. like skill shot guys, um, which most supports are really, but like uh, that's why it, I can't like get too mad at people who buy boots first and then a sight stone. Like if you're losing, in my opinion, buy boots first. If you're winning, buy a sight stone. Okay. And and the reason you do that is because when you're winning. You're gonna be pushed up more, which means you're gonna need the vision more. Okay, so just think about like things logically. Okay, just think about where am I at in the game? Am I winning? Am I losing? And what do I need to build to either extend my lead or make me lose it? Make me lose less. Okay, does that make sense? That's yeah. like the general rule of thumb that I use in my brain in every single game. That's it. I mean, that's it's just as simple as that. Is what is happening in this game and what do I need to do? to further win or less lose. And if that means I'm winning, it's Sightstone first, because that helps not only you and your, and your bot lane, but it helps the jungler out, and it helps your mid lane out, and it helps your top lane out, because you get vision of the opposing jungler. You get, you know, if you know that the jungler is not in the bot jungle, that they're most likely gonna be in the top jungle. So you're giving valuable information to your team, and you're ahead, which is great, so Sightstone's big. But if you're losing, and you're getting hooked a lot, or you're getting Thresh hooked a lot, uh, you know, you're gonna be up against your tower a lot of the time, and that way, and that means the sight zone is gonna be less important because you're not gonna have the opportunity to ward. Does that make sense? So, yeah. just buy the boots and make sure you stay safe. And you also get the 10% CDR right off the bat. You'll be able to throw more uh, binds. You'll be able to um, get your black shield back faster. So those things are really important. And lucidity boots get you closer to that 40% cap that you want to get to. Uh, and then obviously Frost Queen's Claim is going to be last after you're done with those two. Uh, so situational items, um, and this is kind of just going to be the rest of your build. Uh, are you ahead? Let's, 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 let's break it down like this. Are you ahead or are you behind? Um, if you're ahead, let's talk about Zonia's Hourglass. Zonia's will be your next buy. If you're ahead, and you're dominating lane, you've gotten two, like one kill and two assists. Uh, you've been in lane for like 10 minutes and you haven't gotten back and you've got like 1300 gold. You're rich, buy the rod, okay? You buy the expensive side of Zonia's and then you can, from then onwards, slowly build into the Seeker's Arm Guard and then finally the actual Zonia's, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you're rich enough, and this is like when you're like, you know, things are going real well, you've got enough, and I think um, the rod is only 1250, but if you've got 1250 plus, just buy the rod. If not, say you've got like 900 gold, just buy, uh, here, I'll, instead of bleeding it, I'll leave that up there. So 1250 plus, buy the rod, uh, 1250 minus, uh, by towards seekers and then pink here let's make this bigger pink and pots etc okay yeah Does that makes sense you're ahead you got that right uh, second option while you're ahead Morello Namathon. okay this is an absolutely incredible fucking item. I love Morello Namakon. It's one of my favorites. Uh, let's go to pro builds. Uh, you can see a lot of these pros build Morello Namakon. All right, this is Mata. Uh, you get ability power. You get 80 ability power, which is great. You get 20% cooldown reduction. So as soon as and mana regen. Okay, which is mana regen is your best friend. Okay, because I don't know yeah. how how often you find yourself out of mana. But yeah. <laughs> uh, like, it's easy to do if you're spamming. That's why like, as you get better, and we'll talk about this later, is as you get better at Morgana, you gotta start understanding like, 
when to use abilities, when not to use abilities, and when to save it, etc. Uh, but uh, Morel and Avocon is huge. It gives you so many stats that are super helpful. Uh, and if you've bought your Lucidity Boots and your Frost Queen's Claim already, this gets you to your 40% cap at second item, right? So you're already at 40% and it's only like 15, 20 minutes into the game, you know, which is awesome. So now you can start throwing bindings, you can start pooling, you can start black shielding your carries in seven seconds cooldown, you know what I mean? Like stuff that's ridiculous. Like if you're black shielding people at seven seconds, because you should be, by the way, maxing your E uh, first as Morgana, your black shield. But um, my point is that with this, you'll be able to have like an almost unlimited pool of mana along with a 40% CDR cap. It's just disgusting. Then you become this like just annoying piece of shit that doesn't allow anyone to do any damage to any of, <laughs> of, of your players. So that's awesome. Uh, and on top of that, like, so either you go Zonius first if you're crushing and killing and you just want to start team fighting, right? And this allows you to do what we talked about, flash in Zonias. Uh, and yeah. if, you're, if you're like, if you've got a strong team fight comp, uh, a Zonius is great. Uh, or if you if if you've got like more of a skirmishers uh, comp where it's going to be like two on two, two on one, three on three type of situation for the next ten or fifteen minutes that you think is going to happen, Morellanomicon could be a better option then because then you won't need to just like flash in and ult everybody. You can just um, uh, like black shield. You can throw your bindings out. If you hit a binding, then you can ult that one person and guarantee that one single kill. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. just just think about think about it in that regard, right? So, <clears throat> if you're behind, and by the way, we're just talking now about the um, first two items that you build after your core three there. Um, yeah. uh, if you're behind, <coughs> never, ever, 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 ever build offensively. You always want to build defensively. So that means, um, oh shit, I lost my box. It's okay. Um, so that means if you're behind, I don't care. You buy, you build Locket. So Aegis, right? Yeah. If against AP and Frozen Heart, if against AD. Okay. So all right. what's that? I said all right. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah. So. Um, this is huge. Aegis is a really great item, and it builds into uh, two different things. Uh, so Aegis builds into the locket of the Iron Solari, or Banner of Command. Okay. Yeah. So that's again situational. Uh, up to you what you want to do. Uh, if you feel like you've got a good, uh, you know, siege comp, and you, you know you want to like group five bot. You could send, you could buy a banner and then promote like a, a cannon minion. And like I said, like have your top laner set up a slow push and then put up a banner minion. And this banner can literally get to the inhibitor. Like it's like so broken. How like if in bronze, I think banner is fucking awesome because people don't even pay attention. They're like, oh, like, you know, there's um, a wave pushing top, but we've got plenty of time. If you've got a banner minion, especially if you've got an AP top, by the way. So I don't, do you, have you ever bought a banner of command before? I have. Okay, <clears throat> so you know that the bannered minion doesn't take a, uh, is immune to AP damage, right? Yeah. So if you've got a rise in the top lane, or like a Teemo, or anybody who does like, well not Teemo, because Teemo's awesome, and, and he does uh, really good AD, but if you've got a rise or like a Morgana top, or an Annie top, or someone who does all AP, their auto attacks are worthless. It'll take them like 10 minutes to kill a banner. It's like the funniest thing ever to watch like an AP champ try and kill a bannered cannon minion while it just like pummels them in the face. It's so funny to watch. Like I, I ping it and I start laughing uh, with my team. But uh, anyway, if you've got an AP top laner or an AP mid who can't deal with the banner minion it's it's and they've got a lot of AP on their team, I would say go with Banner of Command. I think that's really good. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, if they've got a really good lockdown comp with like a good, good CC, um, they've got like a Fiddlesticks who does a lot of AOE damage, ulting in, buy the locket and, and provide that like AOE shield for everybody. And it makes your, your team fights awesome. 
Uh, but go one way or the other uh, with the Aegis if, if you're against an AP. And if they've got like a Z mid, they've got an AD carry, they got a Rek side, or not a Rek side, they've got like a, let's call it like a Vi or something, um, jungle, and then like a Darius or something top lane, then you can just start stacking armor left and right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this guy, you can see he built armor first and then he bought his Aegis, right? So if we click on it's like special and we look at this game, um, let's take a look at the team comps, right? So, um, <clears throat> Expecial is looking at uh, one AP guy. That's it, right? You've got Echo, who's AP, and then yeah. you've got Kennen, who's building AD. You've got AD carry. You've got your uh, mostly uh, your AD jungler, right? So you can yeah. see Expecial, obviously, and, and this is a great example, is he built this first. He built his... First, he built this because he knows he's against AD, and the only time he's going up against the top lane Echo is if uh, he comes to uh, like a team fight somehow, right? And even then, like he's prioritizing because it's a lot of his damage is going to be coming from AD. And then he goes into the Aegis as um, he starts to build more items and becomes more of a threat. Uh, and then it, you can also get like your um, your level two banner or your Aegis uh, your, or your um, locket so you can help the team out. So you can see, just in practice, the best players in the world are, are doing it just like I'm, I'm, I'm explaining. And, and it's kind of why. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions about any of that? No, it all makes sense. Yeah, so this is kind of why the pros do what they do. So like when you look at kind of builds that pros do, is trying to break down why they built this way. And, you know, So you can see, especially, he bought the Lucidity Boots. He bought the Frost Queen's Claim. He's got 20% um, cooldown reduction. But now that he bought the Frozen Heart, you can see he's got the rest of his build. So as the, the nice thing about Frozen Heart, why it's such a perfect buy in that situation, in that game, it not only got him the armor that he needed, but it gave him flat mana and he hit his 40% CDR cap. So he actually, but buying this Aegis is actually kind of overkill. Like he, he's not going to probably, like if you upgrade this to Banner or um, a Locket, Locket gives you 10% CDR and uh, let's see if we can find a Banner. Banner also gives you 10% CDR. So um, he's going to actually go over his cap because he's got 10% here, 20% here, and 10% here. So this is actually a mistake to upgrade this uh, super early. So I would just hold on to the Aegis and then build like your next item, right? And then as your last and final item, you can buy a locket or a banner, right? So you know what I mean? Just so, yeah. you, can, just so you can avoid going to 50%. Unless he's got the, um, the mastery that gives you an extra 5% CDR. Actually, actually that doesn't make sense because he would actually have that anyway. He wouldn't need to fill it. So anyway, yeah, my point is um, he'd probably, in my opinion, if the game didn't end, he would delay this and he would go towards buying something else instead of finishing that because it's just, it's kind of, unless he really needed the active, which I don't think he would. But uh, anyway, um, so go, uh, fuck, I lost it again. Uh, so if you're behind, Go defensive and just make sure it's situational. Like read your team and see the, if the enemy team only had, say like the uh, enemy team here with the special game had only the echo and it was the exact same and you and you walk into a game and you've got the same exact team comp, but this echo was 13 and one, not one and 13, and everyone else was losing, then you could probably actually buy the Aegis first, right? Because even though there's only one AP champ, he's the biggest threat. So it's always, yeah. always, always situational. Just read what's happening in your game, and then it's like it's like a very simple process. It's like an if then, if then statement. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. If you're familiar with like programming or whatever, but uh, it's like very, very simple to break down builds. And this is this is what you're always gonna need forever. And don't ever like stray from this core. And this should get you to your pretty much ninety five percent of your games. This will get you through ninety five percent of your games. Okay, now. In the five percent, uh, where you where you're gonna need a sixth, sixty seventh item, a sixth item, um, then it's kind of just up to you. Like, if you want, um, if if the enemy team has a ton of AP, then maybe you want to go abyssal. If if nobody else on your team has 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 bought one, right? Um, you know, maybe if it's um, uh, really AD heavy. Uh, and your your frozen heart is is not enough. Maybe buy like a Randuins, right? Um, if you're ahead and you just want to have more fun, buy like a Rylai. You know what I mean? Like 
Rylai's with your pool is disgusting. It's like it slows and pools. Like that's that's just gross. And so, um, like just you know, it's really situational. But don't ever go like wacky and weird. Like what are, what did you build? I can't remember. Like some weird stuff that you bought. Like yeah, the death cap. Like the death cap. You're not like where does a death cap fill, fit into this build? I mean, tell me, right? Like a death cap amplifies AP, but we're not like building towards AP here, right? We're we're trying to be like this utility support. If you were in the top lane or the mid lane as Morgana, then then it's a different story. But we're playing support, so like our job is to not dole out damage. It's to and, and even if it was with like our core items being what they are, we just don't have room enough to make uh, um, something that like scales with a lot of AP like makes sense do you understand like yeah. the like 120 ability power is great but the unique passive of increasing your total ability power by 35 percent is what makes death cap awesome is that like every time you buy another ap item it just becomes amplified um and we're not doing that right like we're only going to have room for like especially if we have to go a little bit defensive for maybe one or two um offensively uh ap heavy items like azonia or morellos um and so, like, if you go this route and you are ahead and you buy the Zonia's Morellos, you only have room for one more item. And, yeah, you can maybe go Death Cap, but in my opinion, since you've only got AP coming from these two sources, really, uh, a little bit from Frost Queen's Claim, your Rylize would probably be better because there's more utility in that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love how the Rylize has that slow every time you E so or every time you W someone, you know? So, um, in my opinion, I just think Death Cap's awful and you should just never buy it. Um, to, and Lich Bane for that reason, for that matter, and probably Archangel Staff for that matter too. Um, Archangel Staff's okay, maybe, but like, you have to charge it up, and you know, it's not like an Ezreal or a Rise where you can just spam your abilities. You've got huge cooldowns. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just it's just not efficient to, to build those kind of things. So just stick to it. I like Zeke's Harbinger. That's really good if you want to get your eighty. If you're like with a Draven or a Lucian or whatever, you want to get like your AD carry super like or anybody who's carrying in your game just get them to be an extra carry this is another defensive one I should have mentioned if you're instead of uh, Aegis um, or um, uh, Frozen Heart you could just go with uh, Azix as well if you're ahead um, this yeah. is a good one to go with your it, w this is a, like a, a defensive item that you get while you're ahead so instead of going Zonia's Morello maybe you go a Zeke's just a snowball. Like if you're eighty carry snowballing, he's got like he's like four zero. Then get the Zeke's and just like sh like end the game. You know what I mean? So uh, that's not a bad buy. But other than that, I think you kind of stick to like a pretty general. <clears throat> you know, you get your sight stone and you know you kind of get Moby boots. Stop doing that. Um, and then <laughs> and then oh yeah, obviously never ever do this. I have the Oasis. No 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 no. Not on Morgana. Uh, she needs the AP. But yeah anyway so. Uh, I'll touch on Soraka too, just for a second. But Swifty Boots, you want the speed, right? You want to do. Yeah. I'll just give you. I'll give you what I build Soraka like with. I, it's so great with Soraka because she's just so brain dead. It's like I don't. I mean, the same rules apply with the Soraka build that with, than with the Morgana build. But you almost never prioritize AP. Where like if you're ahead with Morgana, you can just like just like really buy AP heavy items like your Morels and Zonias and just go off. But with Soraka, I would I would I spam defensive items so that I can just be like, health regen is really really good. People say buy Warmogs, but I don't think Warmogs is good on Soraka unless you have over three k HP, which is like almost impossible to get on Soraka. Um, so I like HP regen um, because that allows you to just be in fights for forever, just regening everything. Um, and uh, swiftness boots, so so swifty boots are a must because they, they get you um, really really fast. So plus alacrity. Um, so alacrity is the green upgrade that gives you twenty. I think it's twenty or twenty five extra movement speed, and that yeah. and that's just like a disgusting amount of speed, especially when that like your passive goes into effect and someone's low. Like, good luck anybody. Like, you're, like, faster than a Nocturne ult. You know what I mean? It's disgusting. So, like, you're just, like, sprinting around, and you should you should die between zero and one times every single game as a Soraka. Like, there should never be a situation where anyone's in range to hit you with anything ever. That's, that's how you play Soraka. 
Like, so I'm just going to solve Soraka for you. How do you play Soraka? Don't get hit. Done and done. Now, now I'll see you in Challenger in like a month. So like, it's just your job is to always stay outside of uh, your opponent's attack range or flash attack range or flash ability range. Do you know what I mean? Like your job is to AFK essentially behind your AD carry and make sure that he's at full health at all times or at least not in danger of having zero health. So uh, with that in mind, what helps you to do that is the Swifty Boots. That's like your number one build. And then obviously Sidestone for the reasons we talked about with Morgana. Um, and then I actually like, um, I don't know how much of, of a meta it is now, but let's say core is your um, Swifties. I like going Swifties first uh, and your Sightstone. Um, that's like your very two core items and then actually Frost Queen's Claim. I actually really like Frost Queen's Claim because it's got a disengage in the ghosts, it's got the engage in the ghosts to slow people down, speed them, um, and to catch, or if they're chasing, it slows them down. And also it's got some AP and CDR, you know? So I like Frost Queen's Claim better than I like the Talisman, even though like Talisman gives you maybe a little bit more, um, I don't know what, it, I, don't, I think it's just, it gives you the speed boost. I don't know if it gives you more gold. I don't think it gives you more gold, but it gives you the it speed gives you, boost. It gives you gold off uh, minion kills at your hand. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, so I don't know if you yeah. get that off of Frost Queen's, but yeah, I think, um, you get no, maybe Frost Queens, Frost Queens gives you the gold if you hit an enemy champion with your ability. That's the one. Okay, that's right. That's right. So um, Morgana is great because you can proc the Frost Queens claim off of the pool, um, yeah. and actually auto attacks as well. But um, Soraka, you only get the auto attack, so it's kind of like you know not as efficient from that standpoint. But I think the final build of Frost Queen's Claim is better because you get more AP out of it. And I like the active of the ghosts better than I like the active of speeding up just who's like close to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sure. So in my opinion, I would go Frost Queen's Claim as your core. And then as you build um, uh, from from there, it's, it's, it's again situational, but if you're ahead, I would go straight into your um, Aegis or Frozen Heart, whatever defensive items that you're gonna need, uh, yeah. or um, or your Zeeks, uh, and then whatever you don't buy, buy the next one next, essentially, uh, and this will be basically your like final final build right here. I mean, it's it's almost never changing between that. I mean, maybe if you if you go. Um, you know, if again, like with uh, as before, like if if there's too much of something on the enemy team, like um, like there's like three AP guys on their team, you might want to buy an abyssal or um, try and get some more magic resist, like a GA or something. I think um, your sixth item uh, could be a guardian angel, uh, which is really good on Soraka. Um, maybe a Zonia's if like like. I don't know. That's like super weird, but I, yeah, it gives you AP, but it also gives you some armor, and um, it gives you the active of, of being defensive. But like the thing about Zonia is, is, like you should never be in a position to ever need it. But I don't know. Yeah. It gives you the AP, but so Guardian Angel, in my opinion, is better because it gives you the magic resist and it gives you the armor plus the active, which is disgusting. I love just being able to revive uh, because nobody can kill you twice unless you've been caught out in a team fight. If you die. You're coming back to life. You can immediately either hit your R if you didn't get it off before you died, or you can immediately get your Q off and re regain some health while you run away. So GA is just like a really great item. And, and like you, as soon as you revive, you hit EQ on top of yourself, which means that they can only auto attack you, and you've just healed yourself, and 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 you can run away, and and it roots them. You know what I mean? So that that combo is pretty 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 awesome. Um, so. Uh, that's kind of my um, kind of Soraka build path. It's pretty simple. It's it's like in every situation it, it works, and there's no really need to deviate from it. Um, there's like times where you can buy like an ardent sensor. Like you can see like oh that's interesting. I actually didn't know that people are building warlocks uh, at the higher elos. Um, I'll have to kind of look more at it. But I don't know how you can get to three three k um, HP because like the passive of warmogs is. 
Um, here, let's go to Pro Builds. If the passive of Warmogs only comes into effect if you have 3k HP. Um, otherwise, it's just like not even. I don't have any played. Yeah, so. Okay, so. Unique passive grants Warmog's heart, which is 15% of max health every five seconds if damage hasn't been taken within each, each second, but you only get it with at least 3,000 max health. So I don't know, man. Like to me, like where are yeah. you, where are you getting that health from? Like these aren't health items. Like this is how this is you know where where are you getting the health from? Like yeah, I guess if you buy Eye of the Oasis, it gets you closer, but and then you buy yeah Giant's Belt, but man, I don't. I I don't really understand that. But anyway, um, I'll have to do some kind of theory crafting and think about it. But my point is, um, just looking at the general build, what the fuck did I just do? Okay, um, you can see, like, yeah, some of them build Talisman. Uh, I don't know if anyone builds Frost Queens these days anymore. Maybe not. Yeah, we got one Frost Queens. We got one voter. Uh, ambition. I trust you, Ambition. Um, but... What, what, regardless of what your gold income item is, they, they get the um, sight stone. You can see how many lockets are built. Locket's huge right now. Almost yeah. everybody builds locket. Uh, Swifty boots are you know a core build. Um, some of them build lucidity if they want the, the CDR, but I prefer the speed at my elo. Like maybe at the highest elos, this is better. Um, their positioning is just better to begin with, so they don't need the Swifty boots. But what the Swifty boots allow you to do is like make a mistake in positioning. You know what I mean? And get yeah. away. And get away with it. Um, obviously, Mikhail's Crucible is a huge. Um, I, I'll mention that um, for both. Um, I didn't. I don't know if I spelled this right, but Mikhail's is huge. If you're against someone, a team with huge amounts of CC. So, like, let's see uh, what Adrian built Mikhail's into. Um, yeah. So you got a Morgana who's got lockdown. You've got a Nunu who's got, a, I think, a stun or something. It's a slow, I think. I think it's a slow. Yeah, it's not a stun. So maybe it's the Morgana. Maybe he wanted to buy it just so that, um, just in case someone gets locked down by a Morgana binding. And at this elo, like, getting locked down by a single binding can be game-changing. So just being able to just negate that one binding could be really helpful, I think. Um, yeah. So anyway, against teams for you and for your purposes, if it's just one person like on a team like this, I don't think it's that necessary to waste the money on this, um, because at your elo, like no one's gonna hit their bindings with like any amount of accuracy. Um, <laughs> you know, at the highest elos at, at Challenger, they're hitting ninety percent of their of their bindings, which is like, you know, I'm gonna need a crucible, right? But at bronze, they're hitting like ten percent, so it's like, you know, I can build like frozen heart instead. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is exactly how you're going to think about itemization going forward. It's really simple, right? I mean, there's not much here. It's just, yeah. it's really like the if-then kind of statements. Does that make sense to you? Yep. Do you have any questions about that so far? I don't, actually. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So we've got your runes. We've got your mastery set up. We've got your itemizations. Uh, the last thing I wanted to go uh, go through before I let you go was your um, hotkeys. And the way you um, set up your client, is it still fucking up? Yeah. Yeah. That's really lame and kind of sad because I kind of wanted to play after this too. Um, I know. I kind of wanted to play. Let's see what's going on uh, at Reddit. Um, if everyone's having this issue. They are. I just checked uh, the server status. Uh-huh. Uh, we're aware of the problems causing your game to fail to load. What can I fix? Oh, we're aware of the problem causing the login effect to fail. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, it hasn't read it yet. It might, might just be like a really new problem. So, like, let's hope uh, they get that fixed. Um, <clears throat> okay, so unfortunately, I can't actually show you in game uh, what I um, wanted to, but I'll, what I can do is I can type it out. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> uh, I don't know how you set up your, your key bindings, um, yeah. but <clears throat> do you use QWER for your abilities? Yep. And do you use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for your items? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. And then DNF for your uh, summoner spells? 
Yes. All right, good. So you're not like a weird. I, I think I co- <laughs> last week I coached a guy. I posted the video, <clears throat> and like two weeks before that, he used like his his um, f- his flash was T, and like I don't. It was like this weird setup that he'd just been doing for so long. And I'm just like I don't. You know, it does not compute in my brain. But uh, as long, if you're comfortable with it, you're comfortable with it. Um, here's the way I have it set up so that. Um, I I basically have uh, my hand on my right hand on the mouse and my left hand on Q W E R and I never have to move my hands off of those areas. Everything's where it's like within finger length away, right? So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw kind of really awkwardly like a mouse, right? Uh, you've got your left click, you got your right click, and then you've got the roller. And then you've got. Um, it's so good that it almost looks like a razor death adder. Yeah, well, that's what I have. Um, that's what I have too. <laughs> nice. So you should have then these two buttons on the side. Yep. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> what I did was um, I'm gonna key bindings. Uh, so let's start with the mouse. Okay. Uh, I made my front front side mouse click for uh, Morgana equal my E self cast okay and then my um, back side mouse click equal back okay so uh, this let's go back to my brush so the front mouse button on the side is you black shield yourself okay think about that like you could be running back and forth in lane you could be running away someone throws something at you a thrush hook a blitz hook all you have to do is move your thumb above to that button and hit that button, and you self-cast shield. That's okay. brilliant, actually. <laughs> that is something that I thought about. I'm like, holy shit, on Morgana, that's broken. That's absolutely broken, because you can be literally like right next to a champ that's going to throw CC at you, but as long as you have the reaction time to see the animation of the hook going out, or you hear yeah. like the thresh hook going out, just hit that button, and it's always going to shield you quicker than that animation gets you every time. The only problem, I love that, no, it's my favorite thing, but like, the only issue with that is it kind of like fucks your AD carry over, like he's off on it, like he's screwed himself, but don't worry, like, as long as you're alive, you can hopefully still, and like not hook, you can CC and like save him, but um, if you're not, like, you always wanna be, so like, here's you um, in lane, uh, and your AD carry's here, and the enemies are here. Like this is a bad situation. You never want to be like if like this is actually yeah. this is actually an okay situation. Like fine. Like if he hooks you, you're you're kind of baiting it because you've got your you're such a good key binding. You're 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 never gonna allow yourself to get actually hooked. Uh-huh. You'll just black shield it and you'll be fine. The the place you don't want to be is here where like this is the enemies and now Thresh or Blitz have equal opportunity to get either of you. Because then you have to be like, okay, who is he going to go for? So you want to make sure that either um, th- that this is the situation where uh, either it's, it's you or uh, it's him that's susceptible. That way you can black shield one or the other. Never be even with them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, if you're the one in front, just know that this is broken. So do that first every time. And then the second thing that I really love is your back key bind, change it from the B key on your keyboard to the back okay. button on your mouse. Cause then it just becomes, you don't have to like, it's kind of awkward to move your index finger from R down to B. It kind of makes you stretch a little bit. And I, I prefer to just have it where like, I can keep my fingers right on the QWER, run into a bush and then hit the back key while still simultaneously all the while having like being in like a uh, battle mode ready. You know what I mean? Like, I, all my hands are still in the places they would be at when I'm, like, in the middle of a team fight, right? 
I didn't have to move my index finger away from, from R just for, even for the fraction of a second it takes, just in case. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, uh, I prefer that, and you can do what you want, but I like that setup the best, just for your mouse, right? So like, let's now move on to your keyboard. Um, so let's go keyboard. Um, let's go QWER standard. Um, items standard summoner standard. So that's easy enough. I mean, I, I like just kind of the regular whatevers. Um, yeah. But F keys, um, use them, especially for Soraka. Okay, so when you first start in the game, uh, you know when you hit tab and you've got like the champions, like row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, right? Yeah. When, you, when you hit tab, do you, do you organize those before every game starts? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, so you're in that habit. So the reason you want to organize that is not just so it's easy to compare, like support against support, AD carry against AD carry. Uh, it actually lines them up to your F keys. So, you, so as your support, you're going to be in the bottom row every time. So the top row is F1, second row is F2, th third row is F3, and your 80 um, carry is F4. So what that allows you to do is if you look at your keyboard and put your finger on QWER, you just have to move your index, middle, and third finger up, straight up, to get to um, your F1, 2, and 3 keys. Right? You're not going to need F4 because your 80 carry is right next to you. But say you want to see the top lane quickly just move your third finger up to F1. You hit F1, it centers the camera on the top lane champion, and then you hit space bar, and it centers it back on you. So instead of having to like use your mouse to go down to the mini bar, um, the mini map, click on the top lane, and then center the, you know, center it around the top lane, it's really inefficient, that takes up to like a second, second and a half. You hit F1 space bar, and that took less than a fraction of a second. That took less than a quarter of a second. And you not only saw exactly what you needed to see, but it was at the center of your screen. How much health does your top lane have? Is he in the middle of a fight to where you're going to need to hit R as Soraka and heal him up right at the last second and turn that, t that, that fight? Uh, and, and, you know, is the jungler coming up? Like, et cetera, et cetera. Like, those are the things that you're not going to be able to get just looking at your mini map. So you need to quickly see it. And if you're like, doing a skirmish you know in the bot lane you're not gonna have time to like click on the mini map center it where you need to you know what I mean does that make sense what I'm saying yeah, yeah. so yeah. getting it in I didn't even know that the F did that honestly yeah so if you actually go to a PC bomb in Korea you'll notice all of Koreans using F keys I, I'm pretty sure that it's like standard F key usage in Korea um, and I think it's like you know, it's in terms of getting used to it now and being like, it's very awkward at first for some people to think about it and like, you know, you move your fingers up to the F keys and getting used to like moving your key fingers from QWER to somewhere else is kind of like awkward for the first, let's call it like five to ten games. But if you can get into that habit, um, even pro players don't use that the F keys as much as they should. Okay, you can watch streams, and if you watch pro streamers and you see them looking, especially junglers who are looking around the map without actually clicking on the mini map, the the way they do it is by using the F keys. So try and notice that yeah, next time. Yeah, I noticed that. I've noticed Calstep does that, and I've always wondered. Yeah. How does, like like scan top lane so fast. Yeah. Um, if you look at this guy named Last Shadow, he's got like a uh, YouTube and, and and he streams. He's like a, a he's like a coach in a pretty high level. Uh, he's like a master tier um, Korean player, but he's born in Jersey. Um, he uses the F keys like a maniac. Like he's the one who kind of opened my eyes to the F keys, and he does F one two three just that fast. He goes F one two three and then space bar, and it literally flashes those lanes on the screen. But he's gotten so used to it, and he's so good at using the F keys that just the flash tells you exactly what you need to know, right? Like if you hit, you know, like like F1 enter just that fast, right? Uh, or F1 spacebar just that fast, you'll get a really quick glimpse in the top lane. You'll, you'll get the flash of how many minions were on his side, how many minions were on the opponent's side, what health was uh, on each champion, and you can surmise 
which direction the lane is pushing, who's winning, who's losing. And you, you got that in that amount of time, right? Yeah. And it's crazy to see some of the Koreans and, and pros who could just like literally just like F123 spacebar just like that and get all of that information instantaneously. But that's what I want you to get to like now instead of having to like learn this later. Get into the good habits now, okay? So, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, and again, this is like literally I'm giving you right now in this lesson. We've been going for like two hours, even more. Um, and how long have we been going? For fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's right, because you played that game first. So um, my point is like, Oh, All the stuff that. that I'm giving you now will, if you implement and make part of your game, will get you from bronze to gold, and I promise you that. Just this lesson alone will get you to gold, okay? If you implement what we've talked about and you make a conscious effort to do the things that we're, we're talking about now, you'll get to gold because a lot of the – like silver and bronze players don't think about any of this stuff that we, we've just talked about. So, uh, and it's, it's generalization, but it's true. Like, there's certain things that they do think about, certain things that they don't, but I'm just saying in general. So, anyway, let's move on. Uh, F keys. Um, so, F keys is number one. Um, obviously, move your items, right? Like, like your potion. Yeah. I don't know what's, what's comfortable for you, but potions uh, for me is two. Two, side three. Yeah, so for me, I like side stone in one because I like my active item, like a Zonia's or like a. Like a um, I lock it of the iron slurry or whatever in my three slot because okay. I use those like like three is the easiest slot for me to get to so I want yep. my most actively used thing in my three or, or the most important one in my three uh, if like like when I'm placing wards I don't need to necessarily be like super like I'm not gonna be in a team fight when I'm like placing wards so it can be in a more awkward spot in my opinion you know what I mean so yeah. one is a, like my most awkward spot because my pinky is not as long as my other fingers. So I'm fine with just having that with where I place my wards. So that's that's just my like logic behind that. But whatever you're comfortable with, no big deal. Um, and so um, just that's another thing. Just make sure. And also, do you level up your abilities using Alt or Control or whatever, or do you do you click on your abilities? I just I click on them because Alt is like too weird for me to hit. Really? Most of the time. Yeah. Do you have like a weird keyboard or? No, I well, I just I just bought this keyboard, so I'm just. Oh okay. Well, try and get used to like okay. So your Q, your fingers are on QWER. Where is your thumb? It's resting on the space bar, right? Yeah, like the middle of my space bar. Okay, so kind of like adjust your hand a little so your thumb is on like the like the thirty three percent mark of your space bar. Okay. Does that make sense? So like your, yeah. your your hand is now at a little bit of an angle, so it's not yeah. like straight perpendicular. It's like um, pointing at I want to call it like a sixty degree angle, uh, where your thumb is now closer to the edge of the space bar. Now like think about moving your thumb inwards and hitting that Alt key. Is that is that less awkward for you? Yeah, that's much less awkward actually. Yeah, so just do that because you'll you'll be able to because um, you're you're. Right fingers are like your index and middle fingers are longer than your pinky, so you'll still have the access to the two, three, four, and you know QWER just fine. But now you've got access with your thumb to the Alt key, and this is actually um, um, really, really, really important. Uh, I would say more than anything else that we talk about with key bindings is Alt key upgrades. Because you if you want to jump on an opponent level two in bot lane or level two in the mid lane or even in the top lane, you want to be able to upgrade your ability and use it instantaneously. Like as soon as you hit two, you're gonna to want to use your black shield or um, use your pool or whatever. I mean, it's not that important on Morgana, but on other champs, it's really important too. But um, so. Change all of your key bindings to Alt Q, Alt W, Alt E, Alt R, and make sure you upgrade using like you just slide your thumb over to the Alt key as soon as you and you'll get used to it. Like it's a little bit awkward at first, but it it gets it's super efficient because say you started Black Shield or something and you wanted to get your Q right away, you, you just hit Alt Q Q and then then your your um, uh, as soon as you hit two, you've thrown out you know your second ability. Okay, does that yeah. make sense? Um, one thing that I started to do 
Um, do you quick cast everything, or do you just normal cast everything? I... To where, like, okay, if you hit... If you hit W, will it bring up like the blue thing and then you have to like click to make it actually activate? Or do you just move your cursor somewhere and then you hit W and it makes the pool go there? Uh, no, I have to, I don't have to cast that. Okay, so I would say quick cast everything except for Q. So Q, normal cast, quick cast everything else. Uh, because your pool doesn't need to be super precise, so like just move your cursor somewhere and then hit W, and it'll, and it'll like pool right at the center of where your mouse cursor is. I think that's fine. There's no reason to not do that. And then same with the E. E's a black shield. If you just move your cursor onto someone and hit E, um, it'll shield them, right? And then yeah. and then you've also got the um, the now front mouse click on the side, which is awesome. And then, you know, same with R. R. R is not like a targeted thing either. So really like what I'm saying is quick cast your W and then normal cast your Q. Because um, you want to have the, the blue uh, line that the Q comes with. Makes hitting things a lot easier. Um, so that's one thing that I, I, I hit, started hitting like probably, my, my hit rate on binds went up 200% when I normal casted Q. Because I used to have a quick cast, it's really tough. Um, all right, so moving on, um, my point is I want you to have your fingers on or as close to the QWER at all times as possible. Uh, but let's talk about communication, which is also huge as a support because you're going to be like eyes and ears. So uh, I would say first um, things first, move your store from P to C, okay? So all you have to do is move your index finger down from R down to C. And it, it just quickly opens up and closes your store, so you can check prices, how much gold, more or less gold you need. Um, and while you're like um, backing, you don't have to take your hand completely off QWER to hit P. You know what I mean? You can literally keep it on yeah. there. So if someone tries to attack you or something while you're recalling and you're in the shop, you can quickly just hit C, bring your index finger back, and you're back into battle mode. Okay, so that's a huge change. So. So far we've changed our back key from B to the mouse click and then our P to the purchase um, uh, down to C, okay? Um, and then your, uh, if you look down at your keyboard right now, you can see uh, with your finger on the QWR, the easiest um, ping buttons for your fingers now since D and F are used for summoners is what? T, G, and V, right? Those are like your bread and butter. Like you want to make those your most... Um, Kind of used buttons so T G V are most readily available so use most used things there uh, and then lesser used pings on H and uh, B and V. So, oh, sorry, not V. Um, N. So, what does that mean? Um, T equals target. So, I wish I was in game showing you this, but you know when you like ping a tower or you ping a defend on tower and it gives you that like ding noise of like defend yeah. or like the the red target on like a champion. Uh, where you can target a champion, you can target Scuttle, you know what I mean, it's the target ping. Make that your yeah. T, because you use that so often, right? Like, defend this tower, attack this tower, attack this person, focus this person in a team fight. I don't know if you do that enough, but I, I when any team fight goes on, I make sure my team understands whether they do or they don't. I'm going to make sure that they know I am going to be focusing the enemy Aurelia or the enemy Callista or whoever like, just ping them, and it'll stop being this clusterfuck of everyone attacking whoever's closest to them. It'll be like all five people are now attacking that like red circle that I just created over the top of the eighty carry. You know what I mean? So yeah. having that close by and the closest by, which is just sliding your index finger from R to T, you don't even have to look down. You just kind of do it, and it's amazingly helpful. So that's my first suggestion. Secondly. Um, 
your G key is going to be your um, alert, quick alert. So, or like you know, ping back. So when people are getting going to ham, people are doing crazy things. That's like your second easiest one. And in bronze, unfortunately, you're going to use that a lot too. Is just to get the fuck out of there, or back up, or don't engage. You know what I mean? So that's T and G right there by your index finger, right? Now, V, which is a little bit harder to get to, but it's going to be like less useful in fights. Like target and alert are huge in team fights, so you need them readily available. V is going to be on my way, right? So um, as a Morgana, you just based, um, you're going to go, to, like we talked about, uh, toward yeah, the dragon. Just hit that, I'm on my way to dragon, right? Or I'm on my way to war dragon, or I'm on my way to back to lane. So just, just make sure you kind of communicate. There's no such thing as over communication. So I use on my way, every time I base, I tell my team where I'm going next. No matter what role, what I'm doing, if I'm in lane and I see that mid lane is shoved up and we just killed bot lane, I'm pinging the mid laner, I'm coming up mid. Just ping them. Because then they know that they don't have to play super defensively, they can start to maybe bait something and they maybe won't back. You know what I mean? Like if you don't ping and you just start heading mid, then the mid lane won't know it unless they look and most people don't look. So they might just like take the next wave and then back as soon as you get there. And then you're just kind of like, okay, I just wasted 30 seconds walking to mid lane. I'm gonna have to waste another 30 seconds walking back and I got nothing accomplished. So make sure you communicate and get in the habit of doing that. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Why I have TGV where they are? Target yeah. alert on my way? All right, now, um, what's kind of less, lesser of importance that we haven't touched on is missing. So missing ping, I made H. So it's a little bit more of a stretch to get there from your R, but you, if they're not in lane, you're not gonna need like your abilities right away. So you can kind of look down at your keyboard and, and find the H key with your index finger and just kind of quickly spam it and be like, okay, bot lane's gone, I don't know where they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's acceptable to be so far away. Um, and then lastly, uh, I'm gonna make another box over here. Uh, is my B is equal to the um, chat history. Again, this is like way away from your, like you're never gonna check this in lane, so it can be like kind of a stretch away. And then, and of course, is um, champion mode. Just so you can really uh, tilt the other players if you want to. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, when you like have your like mastery emote over your champion's head, uh, yeah. I bound that to end. So if I like, if I outplay my opponent, I always throw it up so I can tilt them. It's like not advised, it's kind of a dick move, but whatever. Um, so, anyway, uh, chat history is good to have, obviously, um, if you've missed something and want to see. But again, it's kind of like the furthest away um, because it's not as necessary. So I'm just going to leave this up on the screen so when you rewatch this, you can kind of come back to this point and, and, you know, if you don't rebind it now or get into your client now, you can kind of get into it later and, and redo it. But So that's literally, and then sizing of my peripheries. So, like, um, I don't know if you make your... Your, um, the shit that's at the center of your screen, like your abilities and cooldowns and all that stuff, how big it is or small it is, but I make it pretty tiny because I don't really need to see it. But uh, make sure your mini-map is a good size. That's, that's always something that you want to keep like in a normal or larger size. But all the 